delay going here. All right, we are live. This is the Rational Mail 101. I am Rolo Tomasi, and this is episode number 46. Today, I have uh, Ryan Stone along with me as well. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to get rid of this here real quick. Hey, it's always a blast hey. to chat with you, Rolo. Hey. Yeah, you know, I've been wanting to... Um, let me put that away. There we go. I've been wanting to get you on solo for a while anyways, and I'm kind of glad you decided you would join me on this particular topic because this seems to be the topic du jour on uh, Twitter right now, um, most likely because uh, a lot of people are bad-mouthing me this weekend. Um, you know, <laughs> this to, weekend. This weekend, <laughs> yes, exactly, because <laughs> they've been given permission. Uh, we, I just wanted, we were talking off the air about this. They've been given permission to, to tell me to fuck off. So, you know, um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so anyways, um, I, I think what, what's going to be interesting is, um, just how, like, like when we, like you and I, we just did a show on Wednesday with, um, with Troy and a little bit with Rich and we were sort of doing a breakdown of this guy. Oh, the Heaven's um, Gate pinnacle, cult. Yeah, the Heaven's Gate cult, Yeah, the, the pinnacle of a man thing. And I, 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 you know, that kind of, that sort of set me off on a, on a, an interesting path this week because um, I think that there's a lot of, uh, I, I mean, there's a lot of misunderstandings about the red pill as it is. And so I have like from the, from outside critics, it's one thing to say, hey, look, read this. Um, you know, I try to be patient with people who don't know any better. But then right. there's people who do know better. And then there are the people who have decided for whatever reason, you know, financially or ideologically, that they need to cast me or you or the, you know, the red pill as, as we've been discussing it for almost 20 years right now. Um, and, you know, put it in a bad light for, you know, whatever gain that they're trying to get from it. Um, and you know, be that as it may. So it's a different thing to to uh, to sort of refute uh, to refute people's misunderstandings from an outside perspective versus an inside perspective, or people who should know better. They should yeah. know better, anyways. And it's whether um, do you even want to? Because yeah, I, I hate to say it, but like you admit, since we've been creating stuff, I have no time mm -hmm. to watch you or Rich or even read Carl. Like I have to carve out time to get as little bit as I can mm -hmm. to waste the little bit of time that I have that I could be spending on guys who are worth a damn mm -hmm. watching these guys completely lampoon what they're trying to talk about. Right. It almost feels like just by engaging critique, it's, it's like a waste of time, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. you are right. I mean, like I would not have known about how diluted a lot of the critique was until you showed me that dude in his shed. Yeah. And that's it. And that's all, it's all about belief. And you, on the other hand, have, uh, were kind enough to point me in the right direction about uh, belief versus empiricists and that one uh, that one Reddit uh, thread that we've been sort of referring back to. And I quoted in one of my in one of my posts called the believers versus empiricists. Oh, yeah. Whispers one where he was. Whispers. And that's funny because he used that in Purple Pill debate to argue with the exact same stuff we have here, just on a smaller scale. Mm -hmm. Middle aged mm -hmm. soccer moms who misinterpret the red pill so they can berate a bunch of dudes online for sport <laughs> yeah yeah or you know when uh, the, the what the uh, sun hat brigade right um just for people in the chat right now yes uh pat's out today he uh he had some family things and some responsibilities that he just simply couldn't get out of uh in time for this show so uh pat will be back next week don't worry um, he's coming back uh, <laughs> ryan was kind enough to join me for at least an hour here so um so we're going to talk about today uh really uh, what I the I should give you I should give you a little background as to why I chose I chose this as the the topic today. Red Pill One Hundred One I usually try to reserve for more I, I hate to call it remedial but like sort of like to review like why it is that we come to uh, what we talk about whether you see a, a, a quick hit tweet on on Twitter or um, if you hear a saying there's a lot of like a, one of the things that a lot I think a lot of people really complain about with respect to the the red pill is that we have a lot of jingoism right we have a lot of, of acronyms and we have a lot of this thing and that's one of the people pe people like to say well you know the red pill is a cult it's a cult because they use <laughs> they 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 are they like uh what was it like people were saying a lot I I did a show on Friday that was just sort of a you know you do the show kind of thing I wanted to get right. a, a feel for like how the red pill how my work how the manosphere how all this stuff has sort of affected and changed guys lives and oh um, and you'd be surprised like i know there's for every guy that 
speaks to you with DMs or whatever during mm-hmm. a convention that, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. There's about a hundred guys who achieve things that don't mention anything because they're too busy succeeding. So mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, I know. And, and then those are the people who are, you know, that's funny. I I was uh I Sam Bada has always been sort of my my the voice of my conscious occasionally. And so like when I start taking things too personally because of something somebody said in one of my threads, one of my comment threads on the blog. Sam's there to say, look, you know, you reach over a half a million people every month on the blog alone. Um, and the, the, you know, the, you know, two dozen regulars that you have on, <laughs> on the comment threads are not the totality of your audience. So like when people, when you know people on Twitter or when you know people in your comment threads, you have to understand that your, your voice is a lot more broad than just you know who's responding to you like you're right like people who are already have you know i there are probably people who have read my book who keep coming back to my book and using parts of it to in you know enrich their lives uh who i i'll never hear from uh, and that's that's the way i want it i hope so i hope you take it and you use it for your for your own benefit but anyway so so friday i wanted to 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 sort of give people a chance to sound off and it went a whole lot better than i thought it was going to go um i had I, I i'm i'm sorry if i had to turn some of you guys away at the end i only had like 90 minutes to really do it and uh, i i will be doing that again um, because a lot of people want to sort of you know Get, you know, it's like red pill story hour or something like that but um <laughs> and, and people, people really want to do it and so and I, I i think it's great because it helps to dispel the myths um from not only the outside but from the guys on the inside like the guy that we were talking about on wednesday that guy josh whatever his name was um from pinnacle of a man and it wasn't that you know we used him as an example but i i didn't want to make him seem like oh he's like i had something personal against him i was using him as the whipping boy because a lot of the arguments that he had or that he was saying well this is what the red pills really about is that like these are oh they were nonsensical yeah, they're nonsensical but they're like uh misconceptions that i've heard about uh, whatever it is that I've written about or who I am as a person or why I'm doing what I'm doing or why the red pill is misguided because of this. I've heard about, I've heard all that stuff since 2004, 2008. And I've, and I've come back and said, here's, you know, here's my rebuttal to that. But like, we're, I think right now we're in an era where we're kind of shifting. Um, I think there's sort of a new generation, there's new blood, I think in, mm-hmm. in the red pill. That's why I think a lot of people are starting to, um, to misconstrue a lot of what is quote unquote red pill as what is MGTOW. Um, I, I tend to, I make the separation between red pill and MGTOW. I, I look at MGTOW as sort of like, okay, you have this red pill knowledge. What are you going to do with that? How are you going to put that into practice? MGTOW is one of those practices. It's like, here's my solution. It's to check out of the game. It's not to play the game or it's an attempt not to play the game. There are other solutions like PUA is a solution. Game is another solution. So that's a practice. MGTOW is really a practice. Red pill is the theory and is the analytics that go into what you're going to do with that information. How are you going to use that information? And uh, I see a lot of guys, as I've said before, I see a lot of guys who are um, who are using that as sort of an excuse to you know, to promote their little pet ideology, a trad cons, that's a practice. What, well, uh, you know, what, what role says about this, is, you know, he, of course they, they tear it apart, but what role says about this is right. And, and here's a part that's wrong, but what you should really be doing is, you know, uh, marrying your girlfriend, taking her to the dance and, and basically doing all the old blue pill stuff that hasn't been working for, you know, going on five decades now. Um, so that's a practice. And I think there needs to be sort of a distinction between what red pill is and what those those solutions, I guess, are and how effective are those solutions. So people will criticize me by saying, well, you know, you don't give any, you don't give us any practical information. You don't say you should live like this. You don't have 12 rules for life. Right. You, you basically you don't, don't give them the scripture that they can repeat. Yeah. In the church. You're you're not the uh, well, yeah, you're not the you're not the guy who's you're not my dad. You're not my dad. <laughs> it's almost <laughs> like they dad. want you to be a cult. Please. Tell yeah. Us what to do. Yeah. I write. I know I get, I get criticized for being a cult leader, but yet I'm the only cult leader that's saying uh, you use this information to better your life in the way that you see as the best way about doing things. Um, even when I talk about things from a religious perspective, I still have guys saying, well, then what's the solution? What should we really do? I'm like, 
you know, far be it from me to tell you how to live your life. Well, we're all, it's all, he's telling people how to live their lives and then I'll get it from that end. Right. So mm -hmm. anyways, I just wanted to, to sort of preface what we're going to talk about today, because this is another one of those kind of misconceptions. And it's a misconception that's coming from the inside as a as if it's some sort of new critique. And I will <laughs> show you why it's not a new critique, because I've written about this probably three, three or four times. And it is about the importance of sex. And when I, I, I got into a lot of trouble um, on Pat Campbell's show uh, about maybe three months ago or four months ago. And I had said something to the effect that I, I'd read actually one of my posts or part of one of my posts. And, and this is a sort of a quote that I have. My, you know, one of my memorable, notable quotes was uh, sex is the glue that keeps a relationship together. Now, which guys, should be so controvert, like uncontroversial. Mm hmm. Like the fact that it even raises an eyebrow tells me how bad things have gotten. Right. Right. Like that would be now I would expect women to say, particularly older women, particularly women who are still trying to catch up in terms of the sexual marketplace or trying to catch up in terms of the choices and the, dis, and the, you know, fallout that they've made from the choices that they've already made in their lives. So I got into it with, uh, with Pat's um, producer, Carly on that show. And, you know, she wanted to say that, oh, well, you know, my, my relationship is built on much more than just sex. I'm like, yes. But if you take away sex, it starts to crumble. It's the things start to decay. And Out of curiosity, they, did that person, was that person specific on what there was other than sex? Well, the, you know, well, we have companionship. And it's the same kind of things that you would expect. Now, remember, she, this, is, this is a person from the outside looking in. Right. She's mm -hmm. not in the manosphere. She's, she's just, and she's a woman. And so she's, she has motivations to to foment the idea that there should be more to a relationship than just sex and i'm not saying that there isn't more to a relationship than just sex i'm just saying that sex is the glue that keeps that relationship together sex is the glue. sex is what defines the relationship between a man and a woman when it comes to intimacy when it comes to marriage when it comes to your your long-term relationship your girlfriend because once you remove yeah. that you're now roommates. Now you're roommates. Now you're friends. And a guy roommate would be way better. <laughs> yeah. 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 But yeah, you probably would have less conflict and less arguments. And you know, you would you you, you would certainly days. agree. You'd certainly agree on how to decorate the house, right? <laughs> yeah. So so it's when funny, I I'll, to cut you off on this, I know no, it's point, but it's Please funny because there's uh, an old married red pill poster, Archwinger. I talk about him all the time. He's probably one of the best writers we had. Mm -hmm. And he brought up a great post called Men Aren't Happy. If you guys look it up, this archwinger, Men Aren't Happy, you'll see it. Mm -hmm. And he described this exactly what you're talking about, because he kind of came from that marriage where his wife would have been the one telling you that they have something more. Mm -hmm. And as far as the wife concerned, she's happy. She's living in a nice house. She has the companionship. But the reason that guys are coming here is because they're not happy. So they mm -hmm. can spout all this paddle that they want. But if the guy's not happy, he's going to find his way here. And I don't care how often you're telling people how happy you are that you have your companion. If the guy is looking up porn and then feels guilty and looks up the red pill to see why he's not having sex, mm -hmm. it's a complete inability of a wife to, I guess, empathize with her husband to be the best way to put it. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of sad part is that the guy doesn't even exist in his marriage. He's just a set piece for her happiness. Mm -hmm. And that's a horrible way to handle things. Yeah. And I, I, I think that it upsets women. And I, again, I'm, I'm approaching this from the outside. We'll talk about the inside here in just a second. But mm -hmm. when, when people hear that quote, when they say like when, <clears throat> when a guy, particularly a guy says sex is important, sex has to be at the way I, I, about two weeks ago, I did uh, a show with Pat about um, the hierarchy of needs within a relationship. It's like the relationship hierarchy of needs. I'm still working on that post, by the way. I, I, I have not abandoned that post. Um, so I'm kind of like building, you know, like the pyramid, you know, like the Maslow's <laughs> pyramid of needs before like what a red pill guy should be looking for. Because guys always ask me like, well, how do you vet for a long-term relationship? And I'm like, I'm trying. I'm really trying to at least give you some idea of what the prerequisites ought to be, at least from from my perspective. Like, Sex needs to be at the very base of that, that that pyramid because anything that's built on top of that all falls down if sex isn't there. Now, there might be some things that um, 
like later on in life. Maybe it becomes less of a priority because uh, because of logistics testosterone or or education yeah. testosterone, or maybe it's uh, maybe it's a physical. Maybe you were in a horrible car accident. Maybe you're like uh, uh, Christopher Reeves, right? And your wife sticks it out with you. You know they weren't having. I mean, Christopher Reeves, okay, but she stuck with him and they were still had a relationship. And of course, you know, so there's probably something there that's a little bit, uh, you know, reprioritize. Like, of course she probably did not want to, to come oh, off. She would have rather had sex. She probably, yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. She probably wouldn't, would have wanted to have sex, but and that's uh, the funny, it's the margins too. Somebody is, mm -hmm. will use Christopher Reeves example as that's everybody's example. I'm like, no, no, no. He's like three standard deviations away from a regular relationship. Mm -hmm. You can't use him as the model. He's the exception. Yeah. It's not the rule. Ryan, can you move over a little bit? Oh, am I? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, everybody's saying, oh, he's on the side. Um, yeah, exactly. And it's like, it's not like sex isn't important. It's just that sometimes circumstance is going to going to preempt that. Like what and and again, that's like horrible disfigurement. That's like you know, something that's uh, you know, maybe there's something that's going on in your life. Maybe it's also it could be uh depression, it could be well, yeah. You know, let's go simple here. Let's just say the first six weeks after pregnancy, obviously, sex there is not a priority, it's yeah. medically impossible at that point. So there's something, but in the long term, in the larger scope, looking at the forest instead of just the trees, mm -hmm. um, it it is the glue that holds a relationship together because that you know, I and I'll I'll use this this uh, once more uh is that, you know, I, I love my mom. I love my daughter. Uh, I love my best friends. Um, I love my so brother. Brave. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. I love all these guys. You know, I love, I love a lot of people. Right. But I only have sex with my wife. Right. Because that is what my marriage is predicated upon. Right. Now, if she decided, she says, okay, tomorrow we're, not, we're you're cut off for the rest of our lives. Well, then I'm going to have to find, first of all, I'm going to have to find out why that is why it is and then then after that i've now i've got a problem that i need to solve now i have another another problem because the base of that pyramid is gone so now right. i have to either decide well i need to find sex outside of the marriage or i need to uh divorce my wife and move on or because that is something that is uh that that keeps and i should i should say this it's not just guys because i think a lot of women like to like to say well that's so that's so shallow it's so shallow on your part it's like no women need sure. it too they need it yeah. just as much as a guy does particularly when it's in, within the relationship and i don't think that women really realize how much that they actually need it from within that relationship because once you sort of have that familiarity and you have that rapport and you have that comfort and that 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 regularity of it then it's like okay it's like you know well we take sex and we put it over here and now we're going to move on to well, you know making sure that the drapes match the carpet and and the, you know we'll got to go to bed bath and beyond and make sure the pillows oh you mean the actual drapes and carpet <laughs> yeah no yeah so yeah excuse me yeah, that, that's not the metaphor i wanted to use um so when when it's from the outside, I understand that. Um, and the the typical when I when I stress how important sex is from the outside, like I'll get guys who are still blue pill and they're kind of under they're trying to understand, they're trying to wrap their heads around why sex is so important. And and I know some mig I'm 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 prefacing everything I say about MGTOWs from here on out with some MGTOWs. With the exception um, of the guy who's about to start typing furiously in chat. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Which, by um, the way, is the technique I use when a woman is arguing with me about this stuff. I'm like, you're clearly the exception here, not yes. the average woman. Yeah, and well, then they calm right down. <laughs> some MGTOWs have told me that you don't need sex. You don't need sex to live, right? You don't need sex. You, you, you need oxygen and you need food and you need you know what okay so what else do you need to 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 stay alive and i love how everybody like breaks these things down into like your like the most basic needs that a person has you know obviously i'm going to die. like the their the argument is this you won't die if you don't have sex right yeah well you, you will that's the thing it's just mm -hmm. it's dangerous not like arsenic is dangerous it's dangerous like smoking is dangerous mm -hmm. we're a social creature i mean evolutionary psychology wise we came from chimpanzees, very social animals, not tigers and social or solitary animals. Yeah. So you go for an extended period of time without human interaction. It warps your brain. Mm -hmm. It basically breaks it. And if you want to talk about survival, having a healthily functioning brain, it's pretty top of that priority list. Just because right. it doesn't kill you this week 
doesn't mean you're not going to put a bullet in your mouth a year from now. Right. And that's, that's the, that's part of the topic that I got into in a post called you need sex, which I wrote way back in June 26 of 2013. And I, that was, this ended up being a really kind of controversial text or, you know, or, you know, uh, essay for myself. And I'm just going to read it just a little bit from this. Now, remember, I wrote this back in 2013. So and I, I wrote, and there's this, the segment I'm going to read here is called Big Heads and Little Heads. Okay. So one very common dismissal of red pill awareness I read from Blue Pill Men is this feigned blase indifference to sex. Okay. And this is what I am told. Mm -hmm. All that red pill PUA shit is for guys who obsess over sex. They only go to the links they do to get laid and never see the bigger picture. You need, you don't need sex. You know, you don't need sex. You know, you want to die. Uh, you won't die from not getting laid. Right. And I hear, of course, why I was writing about this is because I would get, you know, critics who would tell me this all the time or some variation of like, like, oh, well, you know, it's not necessary for physical existence. Right. Okay. So, and here's what I'll just continue here. It says, for the most part, this pseudo indifference is really a feminized conditioned response couched in beta game. Okay. The idea, of course, is that for Blue Pill Guy to promote the public perception that he is above his sexual interests or above his sexual impulses in the hopes that any girl with an earshot or reading uh, his comments online will recognize his uniqueness in not letting his cock do the thinking for him. For uh, from a male know, like from a male deductive logic standpoint, it makes sense to feminize male to the feminized male. Uh, women have all told him how put off they are by guy well, with guys who only think about sex. I'm sure you probably heard that. Like all you guys ever think about is sex, right? So, oh, I know. It's, so he'll in, so he'll identify with the, with the women. Remember we're taught, we're brought up as, as you know, defective little girls. We got to identify more. So when a guy hears that, he feels like, well, that's, I've got to identify. So he says um, he'll identify with the women uh, he'd like to get with and not be like other guys. So by, by saying he doesn't need sex, that makes him unique amongst the herd, right? So boys subscribing to this identification usually find themselves sexually frustrated by the very women they hope to connect with in their sexual indifference because on a core level, women are uh, psychologically insulted by men who actively desexualize themselves in order to get with women. Despite every verbal protestation women can muster, women are aroused by and ego affirmed by men who are unashamedly, who unashamedly display the covert social cues of wanting to fuck them. Right. So that it's a, especially if the guy is high value. And yeah. got, you know, people will say, well, you know, well, women don't want to be like, what about that kid? What about that kid, that 19 year old kid who put his arm around the girl or he touched a girl? Yeah, what about that singular and, example that made yeah. the news worldwide? Yeah. Well, well, what about that? that? <laughs> well, let's just say in most of human history, okay, you know, we haven't tried to desexualize ourselves to the point where it's like, well, you know, we, we, we want to make our disinterest in sex something that sells the woman on having sex with us you know it's like right, this i taking the responsibility for wanting it now yeah. you're putting it in your lap well i didn't want it mm -hmm. i wanted higher things but you know if you want it okay and of mm -hmm. course women are going to jump at the bit to initiate because women yeah. love initiating yeah yeah so Which, it's by like, the way, if you guys don't know that's a complete lie they mm -hmm. they fear <laughs> rejection so bad mm -hmm. that they would rather go home frustrated than make the first move yeah <laughs> it's yeah. just a thing <laughs> Yeah, uh, let me just, I'll just quickly finish up this uh, this last bit. I wanted to read this. It says, that's the beta game behind the you don't need sex buffer. There's more to this rationale than that. Technically, the beta reasoning is correct. Physically, you're not going to die if you don't get laid. Okay, I understand that. You could probably masturbate to relieve yourself or live a sexless existence due to a physical disability and live product a productive life as satisfying as you can manage. If you don't know what you're missing of or if, sexual, if a sexual subs uh, substitute does the job, what's the difference, right? The line right. of reasoning is that it isn't food, it isn't water, it isn't oxygen, it isn't really necessary for existence. So that's the that's kind of like the, the jumping off point I wanted to use here because I think that 
this speaks to a greater dynamic that is coming now from the moralists and the the trad I don't know, the trad pill right the, the guys who used to be red pill who now suddenly decided that they're going yeah, to be once tra they got a wife traditional yeah once they got a wife once they the wife up a, a single mother or whatever you know once they did that now we've got to find some way to rationalize why it is that that sticking with what it is that they're doing is is really the noble uh, you know the noble mission and that's the worst part because it's kicking the ladder out from under them. Well, now mm -hmm. that I got a wife and I got the sex thing unlocked once every three months, well, you guys need to look about something better. Yeah, Go Conks, Conks does sun hat pill. Yeah, that's kind of like what it is. Pill. Yeah, that's the part that bugs me. It's like when you say these guys should know better, it's true. Back when they were single, it was very important. And then they found what they were looking for. And all of a sudden, now it's not important. Mm -hmm. My life is not the audience's life, it's not the people listening to me's life. Mm hmm. And I'm so glad that a lot of guys in the red pill, they write down their field reports ever since the old mystery days, because mm -hmm. I would forget how bad things can get if mm -hmm. I didn't write down how I got to where I am now. And so I constantly have that reminder to remind me that, yeah, that's great. Right now, I have no concerns over it. I can think about bigger things because I've got it handled. Mm -hmm. But I'll remember back this five years ago when things were really bad. So I know when some guys posting like this angry rant i'm like i know where he's coming from and i can actually address it as opposed to just ah oh, dude don't worry just do more push-ups and forget about women go mm -hmm. do your own thing yeah and that's the and that's the thing that gets me is like it used to be that and, and i i was discussing this over the weekend is that um that game and pua that everybody seems to vilify we always want to make these care we will like it seems to me that it doesn't matter except for the red pill whatever branch of you know the red pill whatever atomization whatever you know faction of the red pill you want to look at right now that mm -hmm. is trying to move away from that like whether it's MGTOW, mras um uh, trad pills whatever you want to call it um all of these fact this factionalization all use the same caricature of a pua it's always mystery right it's always the guy with the black fingernail polish and and the big top hat and you know the fuzzy boa or whatever oh yeah that's what a pick pickup artist really is no that that's a long gone my friend and but here's the thing is the the fact that back in the early 2000s when we were comparing notes on alt fast seduction on so suave on other forums uh that led to what we know is the red pill what we know as migtow what we know as mras what we know as as even even the trad cons who are used to who wanted to say oh i'm a red pill but i i'm a red pill up to a point i'm a red pill when i when i you know when i feel like it and i'm 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 something different when i'm not and, and that's where the purity test arguments come right. in right mm -hmm. It's a whole bee's nest, and I don't feel like dealing with that either. It's just, are you in it for the benefit of men's sexual strategy or not? Mm -hmm. I find that's the oh, that's the easiest litmus test to find if somebody's red pilled or not. Yeah, it's easy. Are you here to help or are you here to moralize and sell? Well, and and the other thing is, it helps. I think these this factionalization, like having that caricature, having that. Well, those are guys who are just obsessed with sex. Those are the guys who are. Um, uh that that's all they think about it and it's it's all about it's all about sex 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 but like yes it is that important and you do yourself no favors by desexualizing yourself and so and what what they they, you know, we're gonna start talking about auto maintenance on our sexual strategy channels no well here's the thing and and i'll and i'm, I'm gonna read another uh, quote uh, from another one that i wrote just a little while ago um but what the idea is this is that we're especially when I'm talking about Evo, Evo Psych, where I'm talking if I if you attach the word evolution to anything like Evo Bio, Evo Psych, Evo, you know, anthropology, whatever you want to call it, um, people turn off, like particularly of a certain mindset they want to turn themselves off to. Um, you know, especially if they're like part of a like a spiritual movement or they're what I call shamanism right now. And yes, I know what shamanism is. I'm using that term. Go Screw oh, that guy that listened to you yeah. like a third. Yes. I, oh, yeah. have leaf belt. Because it's you, because it, yeah, exactly. Well, that's not really what shamanism is. It's this, you know, dude. Okay, I get it. Okay, new ageism, right? Is that does that feel are you feel better about that? This this dude, that well, reminds me of the rebuttal of that guy who just wrote the little pamphlet on why red pills bad. Mm -hmm. And the rebuttal to it was yes, we talk about plate spinning, but we don't actually think that women are plates. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. don't listen like a spurg. Well, and then I always, and of course, the the easiest illustration of that is how guys want people who are usually this is from outside uh, the red pill. People will say, "Oh, those red pillars, they think they're silverback gorillas, right?" Because we use the term alpha, right? And they think that 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 
all of those things in, in primatology should actually transfer. And a lot of them do, but they think that even though that terminology, oh, those guys don't know what it is. And why do they say that? Why do they say, or why do they want to make that comparison? Why do they want to use that in some way to dismiss the, uh, the ideas or the dots that I or the red pill or whoever connects by saying, well, he doesn't know what an alpha male, alpha male has been, has been refuted or it's uh, that, you know, no one uses that. Or, uh, if you're using alpha or beta unironically, then I, you know, then I imagine being you, you know, um, who hurt you? <laughs> yeah. So when, when I hear that, that's really an attempt to dismiss other ideas that are based and built on the concept the abstract term of what alpha is and here um, what lays credit credence to your men raises defective women because mm -hmm. that dismiss, dismiss the speaker thing mm -hmm. that's a feminine method of argument because the one thing that women fear more than anything is from a evolutionary standpoint is ostracized ostracization ostracization yeah, <laughs> it's been a long day. Uh, Being right. expelled from their social groups—that's mm -hmm. their biggest fear ever. Yeah, yeah. But when so that, yeah, mm -hmm. when somebody gives that as their argument, well, he's not a real man. Nobody respects him. His reputation is smashed. You can tell right there the guy either has a single mom or a dad that didn't correct his mother, mm -hmm. and yeah. that's the mental models he's developed over his life on dealing with conflict. Yeah. It, you know, it's funny. You should you should refer to like tribalism or like when I talk about uh, evolutionary concepts. I'm not an evolutionary psychologist. Okay, I it's it's a hobby for me, right? It's like it's a very as I should say that it's a passion for me. I like to understand these things because I I want to know how we tick, particularly when it comes to intersectional dynamics, because that's what I got myself into. So. Mm -hmm. Um, I, and, and I was just telling you this, um, on Twitter, not too long ago, you really have to read this book called alpha God. And it is, it's by, uh, Dr. Hector Garcia. And I, if I can, yeah, get, it, it, the title does not let you know what's inside. Does so not, sure. Yeah, but boy, you, it will. And I'll tell you the guys who like the trad cons who are coming on at me or you know, coming at me right now with this, with this, Oh, you think about his sex kind of stuff. Um, they would lose their minds by reading this because it would explain a lot of in and, and all sources cited everything. It, it, reading this book, I, I've I've decided because uh, I'm in the re-edit of my own book right now is that I'm going to have to cite a lot more sources from what I'm you know for principles and what I'm doing right now. Um, Look at you getting yeah. all academic. yeah I know now I'm academic yeah well you don't have a doctorate you know yeah okay. Um, I, I, so anyways, uh, that, but the book is really fantastic from, uh, evolutionary psychology perspective and how, um, how our, a lot of our religious practices, um, relate to us, what we are as human beings, right? How we came to be who we are like physically as animals today. And I'm not saying we're all animals, but I'm just saying that, that that's we where we're at, but well, we're not we're just really good only ones. animals. Yeah. So we're really good ones. Yeah. Um, what are we made of stars and magical? Yeah. Fairy? Well, I, I'm not going to go there, but yeah, <laughs> but, you know, technically they're right. But I mean, let's, let's yeah. focus on let, Let's keep like, you know, what is it? Uh, was it Aristotle and Socrates? Let's keep it here. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but it, it, that you have to read that book. It's right. And it's, it's not just about the religion aspects. It will open your eyes to a lot of reasons a lot of the arguments that are being used against the red pill right now because the the primary one that's being used i think right now particularly from the the convention uh people is that we've evolved above all that there's a greater purpose to us or excuse me there's a greater meaning or i am too important uh, you know to be a real man uh, of course we're all you know it's all scotsman no true scotsman uh you know, mm -hmm. rationalizations here again, but to be a real man, you have to accept that you are above all of this. And I and understand. the funniest thing too is when you ask, like, what does that mean above? Because people right. aren't inventing new things. Or you have to find and meaning. Yeah. Read and have more kids, mm -hmm. which is the basic base biological function of every animal. Mm -hmm. And so they, I they pick the, and I don't want to dismiss it as irrelevant because I mean, obviously the whole reason things have evolutionarily moved forward is because of procreation. But then to say you're above it all by doing the base instinct, it's a little mm -hmm. bit incongruent. You got to admit. Yeah. Well, that's what brings, I mean, what brought guy, what brought the early pickup artists together? How do we solve our reproductive problems? How do we get laid more efficiently? How do we uh, say the right things, behave the right way um, to solve a reproductive problem? That is at the base 
of every guy on planet earth with a healthy amount of testosterone. That is why born again Christians report being addicted to pornography at what uh, Conk will give it to me. 68%, I believe of evangelical Christian men, uh, claim to be addicted to pornography. Hey, do they define what they mean by addiction? Like how, how much porn is an addicted amount of porn? I, I you know what? I don't know. A conch will probably come up with a, I think it was him or it will, else it was Jack Napier who put that out recently. Um, there's, you know, these are Pew studies, um, as to, you know, it's whatever they're responding to. And I, again, I'm not like when I say something like that, it's like, Oh, well he's attacking Christian. No, I'm not attacking Christians. I'm saying that's part of your base human nature that's part of the animal part that is you and if your wife is not having sex with you you will find ways to attempt to try to find ways to re to solve your reproductive problems men are problem solvers reproduction is a problem so we we look for ways we look to ways to educate ourselves um we look for ways to um if, if we want to learn how to do something if i want to learn how to change a tire or whatever i can go on youtube and figure it out right it's okay we, we're inquisitive we are idealistic we want to know what is possible so there's no there's nothing wrong with a guy wanting to try to you know try to figure out how can i be better with girls how can i be better with uh how can i get my wife to have sex with me again how do I solve my my honestly? Need whoever to... solves the SEO problem for that is mm -hmm. going to hit every red pilled married guy because yeah. that's word for word the search of like eighty percent of users who find us for the first time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So they okay. So Conk gave it to me here. So sixty eight percent of self identified addiction. Okay, so that's them acts. That's guys saying yes, I am a sex addict. Whatever that means to them as a sex addict or a pornography addict. Um, but again, why, so why is that? Why why is it that? Uh, how come? I mean, what 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 percentage of women actually, you know, Christian women say something like that? Because and I'm I'm picking on Christians here because that's not behavior that they should be engaging in. They should be above it, right? And that's what the critics on the inside of the red pill are saying right now. You should be above this. You should be uh, a, a real man. Uh, doesn't uh, isn't is isn't as concerned with sex as he is with his own you know with meaning with finding meaning in life, which of course I think is kind of a weasel, is a weasel word. You know, I think that I think that the men need purpose. Whatever meaning is, that's <laughs> subjective. You go ahead and find your meaning, do whatever you need to do, but purpose is another. I, I think people get get those two confused quite a bit. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, but there is an idea, and this is, this goes back to what I was talking about when people, when guys, blue pill guys, will say, uh, "I'm I'm above that. I'm unique." You know, those other guys <laughs> all want that sex, and and when a woman says, "Why?" I don't know. You've, you've, I'm sure you've heard this before. Women will say, wow. and girls, teenage girls, to you know, old women. I don't understand why sex is so important to guys. Whenever a woman says that, believe her. Okay, <laughs> because. Oh, yeah. She probably doesn't get it because she's not swimming in 17 times the amount of testosterone that like you are. Uh, so men's sexual nature is always on. Women's is cyclic. That's why women don't understand that. Uh, but I think we expect men to behave themselves or to be under sexual uh, to to behave themselves and to adopt ideas about sex that align with women's mating strategy that's why so don't just act legally but you also have to think as well think that's as well, an yeah. authoritarian mindset mm -hmm. uh, i'm gonna yeah, i'm gonna I, I'm oh, go ahead walk around roping women everywhere that makes sense that's a law not breaking a law is about as moral as you can expect from people now which is fine mm -hmm. but then saying not only do you have to not try for sex 24 7 but you have to believe you don't even want to Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I'm ready to give real estate up in my moral framework for middle-aged soccer moms to tell me how to think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe really some guys do because they think they'll get some out of it, but so I don't know how they have wanna, the project. I want to move on here to the in this is like critics from the inside. Okay. Like when I'm done when I'm dealing with Carly or if I got women on the outside who are saying, uh, you know, well, relationships should be built on more. And of course he's channeling for Pat Stedman right here. And uh, basically saying that you're just, you're a piece of shit. If you, uh, if all you ever think about is sex. And this is like, this is standard pablum. I would hear from, from blue pill guys who want to criticize the very guys who actually brought them to where they're at right now, which is the guys. Yeah, who then your moral, then your moral high ground can be assured, I guess. Yeah. Okay. And I and I understand. God, man, you really, got, you really got to read Alpha God because that's it. That's sort of that's that is kind of like alpha posturing. 
Like yeah. you need to believe like I believe. And if you don't, or if you're, uh, I, I pity those guys because all they ever think about is sex. No, sex is important and it's something that needs to be understood. But to say that you are above all of that, is, you're selling something at that point. And I'm going to, I'm going to read this. Actually, I have got it right here. Okay. Nice. So this is, this is uh trads versus the playboy lifestyle. This is from a post I have called little big head. Uh, and I, I named it that because of course, what do guys say? Well, you need to start thinking with the big head instead of the little head, right? Ha ha. Well, the, as if that in some way makes them, you know, above it all. And so here's, here's what I'm going to talk about. Uh, tra trads versus the playboy lifestyle in order for beta men to affect this reigning in of the alpha men, women want to tame and breed with the high SMB man must be demonized and disqualified from the sexual marketplace for following his sexual biological imperatives. The most common way to do this uh, is by conflating his strategy with a degenerate hedonism. And we hear this all the time. Those guys don't care about Western culture. Those guys don't care about marriage. They don't care about uh, uh, monogamy. They don't care about, you know, the things that are going to keep, you know, we're got to save Western culture. So we've got to live by this. So Do we have to care about leeching as well or so. So uh, it's all about hedonism, right? So you're a hedonist. If you follow the red pill, you're a hedonist. If you're a pickup artist, and really that's what, the caricature of the 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 uh, PUA really comes down to. So the most common way to do this is by conflating him with a degenerate hedonism. He must be made to seem as if he's not in control of his sexual nature, which is something that we're taught as children from a very early age that you have because our sexual nature is always on. We teach boys generally to be in control of that. How do we do that? Well, socially, we do it religiously, we do it in the family and everything else. But it's much easier to say, well, that guy is like a little kid because he can't keep his pee-pee in his pants, right? That's the whole thing. And there's there's other, there's other more to it than that, but I'll, I'll continue. So, so the effort becomes one of building an archetype around the playa, okay, or that caricature of the PUA. A man who would a uh, man who would be a bad long-term bet for a woman's hypergamy because he lacks self-control. So if you can make him look like, well, he can't stay in a relationship for that long. He'll, he'll just, uh, he'll, he'll nail you and, and move on to the next. He'll spin you as a plate and he'll move on, right? He's not a good, he's not a good uh, prospect for long-term right? because remember long-term relationships, marriage, long-term monogamy is the end goal for these guys. That's the highest level that you can get to because that's where they're at okay for okay so for this straw man character uh for this straw man character his little head does the thinking for the big head making him unreliable as a prospect for paternal investment if enforced monogamy defines the accepted sexual marketplace and women are presumed to be co-equal co-rational participants in it in, in it the playa needs to be cast as the outsider. The latent message is the same intrasexual combat method women use with slut shaming. The playa is the bad bet for the long-term security, even if he is the guy women still want to fuck. So however that the however that playa is a cruel reminder that low SMB men that they'll uh, that they'll never be able to fully exercise their own masculine imperative unlimited access to unlimited sexuality the closet uh, uh, the closet uh what's this oh the close excuse me the closet the closest the majority of men will ever get to this is online porn which is what i why i brought this up which of course is why it's so popular there's a reason why 68 percent of men watch pornography they understand that it is the only viable substitute for their sexual imperative that they're likely to experience in their lifetime while MRAs and MGTOWs tend to reserve a special hate for players, it's the trad con mindset that is the most vocal against the Playboy lifestyle. There's an overarching need amongst trads to confirm their ego investments in locking themselves into force enforced monogamy. So I wanted to, to read that out there because when I see a lot of guys come to this conclusion or when I see a guy who has been very... Um, very outspoken as a red pill advocate. Um, and I'm not going to name names, but there are guys. You want who, me to? Yeah, go right ahead. There are guys. <laughs> who, yeah, yeah. A limitable man was, was a really good, a good example of this. There's other guys as well. 
um, yeah. where they will get into a relationship. Uh, Roosh was actually a good example of this as well. Uh, they would get into a relationship. Finally, they were, they're living the player lifestyle. Tucker Max, really good example. Get into the player lifestyle then um and make a living at it and everybody loves what they're what loves the books that they're writing and loves their blogs and loves their shows and everything and they they they're and they learn and you know they're you know guys who are on the outside learn something from those guys but as soon as they get into that that uh i got a girlfriend or i just got married uh julian, taking the ladder out from under them exactly Jul oh, julian blank another good example just got married <laughs> his his narrative changed overnight because now he can't reconcile that old lifestyle or that old, you know, the, those old ideas, well, old to him anyways, uh, with his new, his new lifestyle, with, with who he, you know, who he is Ooh, now. Question for you on this one. Mm -hmm. Something I'm curious about. Do you think it is them kicking the ladder out from under them? Like, I got mine and now you need to want what I want? Or do you think it's because if their wives were to see their brand in action the way it used to be? that they would, they're worried about the sex tap being turned off. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you think is the motivation for that hundred percent switch? Okay. Well, I, okay. So when I'm looking at guys, now this is just guys who are, uh, who are in the industry, let's just say like they've, they've built a reputation, they built a website, they've built a blog, they've built a, a person, <laughs> an online persona. Um, that is one way. Right, that gives you this wisdom and this red pill stuff and all that. I think one of the the advantages that I have is I was already married before all of this, and then now right. I've come to this, and I, you know, and I've used it to enrich and to have a better marriage at, based on what I understand, what my based on red pill awareness. Um, but it's and it's almost predictable now when a guy gets into a relationship, like a guy like. Um, a guy like Tucker Max, I don't he's my favorite whipping boy. Guy gets into, you know, he writes, I hope they serve beer in hell. And then uh, is a, a you know, a, almost like a folk hero online to frat boys and, and everything else. And then suddenly he knocks up a girl and the the narrative changes. Now it's we need to be more responsible. We need to be, you know, I disavow. I mean, he he actually publicly he and Julian Blank publicly disavowed. Um, their old pickup artist lifestyle, which of course feeds into women's uh, mythology that, oh, these I couldn't guys imagine warehousing like a large chunk of my life. That just seems so strange. Well, they have to in a way because they've got to find some way to reconcile that past with the decisions that they've made to to be monogamous, to to do what it what it is that they want to. So reconcile to themselves or to their women or well, to, their to, their, to their women, to their to themselves. Um, that's why you see like somebody like Todd Valentine or you see somebody like uh, Tucker Max. Um, they try to rebuild themselves or reimagine their brand. Um, as the guy who's going to be the, I'm the voice of reason. I used to be a red pill. They're the reformed bad boy archetype, right? <laughs> I used to be like that, but now I'm a church going, you know, God fearing, you know, trad con uh, husband. And I've got to think about the future and we need to have more babies. And, you know, my white babies is basically what it comes down to. And let's save Western culture because of that. And, you know, if that's your grift, fine, you know, go, go do what you're going to do, but don't bad mouth the guy you know what got you to where you're at right now and that's what a lot of guys do is they have to in some way disavow or throw the red pill under the bus so like for instance oddly enough in a in a uh, election cycle you know what was the first thing that roosh did roosh says i i'm i'm breaking i'm breaking away from the red pill I've, you know screw those guys throws the red pill under the bus and what did he do immediately after that he started neo masculinity which we don't hear anything about anymore because it was I really, still love that. If you guys really, don't know neo masculinity, by the way, it's red pill, except for no gays allowed, essentially. Yeah, no gays allowed, and no <laughs> no, gays yeah, allowed. no no degeneracy, and no evolution. Right? It, it's it's it, yeah. I, I think that was that was a real shocker for a lot of guys. <laughs> and again, it's this attempt to reinvent oneself as something else because they can't reconcile that old life with the new life. And so we see that going on, I think, right now, particularly at the 21 convention. A lot of the guys that are uh, who used to be very, you know, they were happy to be uh, at a convention with Roll Tomasi. They were happy to be, you know, to be included in all of this. And now, oh, I know a lot of red pill stories. Way, and... Yeah. Now they've got to find some way to to reconcile what got them to where they are and with where they want to go. And so part of that has to be vilifying the old message. Well, those red pill guys are just all about the sex. They don't think anything deeper. They don't want to, they don't want to find any more. They, uh, you know, they they don't believe Jordan Peterson when he says, you know, you need to find, uh, uh, what is it? What did he say? Um, clean your room. Map, maps of me, maps of meaning. We have to follow these maps to find meaning. 
And and the funny thing is, because that's field reports essentially. Yeah. So it's not yeah. even bad. It's here's the thing I love. Jordan Peterson is not bad. A lot of his vice is good. Maybe needs a bit of tweaking here and there. A lot of the metaphysical stuff can go. It's not Peterson that's the problem with a lot of red pill guys. It's his followers. Mm -hmm. And I think I've noticed, I don't think it's an accident that as soon as he hits some hard times in his life, mm -hmm. that all these nut jobs are coming out of the woodwork with their own version of clean your room. Mm -hmm. Well, clean your domicile, clean your woodshed. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. Right, well so when clean you your shed, when you look at guys, okay, first of all, I have to, I have to question the motivations right there because a lot of these guys don't have any other job than just what it is they were doing and what they need to do now. So again, Tucker Max, take him for example, he's got to reinvent himself. He has to write another book about, you know, how uh, he's re a reformed bad boy and this is the way forward and hope that this the old audience is still gonna pay, pay attention to what he's saying. And so he's got to find some way to, to reinvent himself, um, not just for, his marriage, which of course is, is something I would, I would probably say that he doesn't think that he could be what he was in the marriage that he's in right now. So we've got to find convenient answers. We've got to find, and nothing's more convenient than, than morality. We've got to, we've got to lift things up. I'm higher. I'm above all, all that stuff that I, all that way that I used to live. I'm actually above that. Now I'm above my evolved nature. I'm above needing sex. And that's why people, that's why a lot of guys on this side of it vilify sex or vilify a guy wanting to solve his reproductive problem. Well, you know, if you were a real man, you wouldn't need that. Well, guess what? That's what blue pill guys have heard pretty much their entire lives is sex shouldn't be that important. You should, you should, and, and Hey, you know what? Great. I, I understand that a lot of guys in the success porn side of things want you to be better. They want you to be the best version of yourself that you can be right. Nothing wrong. Yeah. The with singular that. best version. Cause heaven forbid, there's multiple things you could excel at. Yeah. That's and, what I hate. It's like that. They have the idea that there's one path. There's crappy man here and there's Uber Mensch here. And there's one morality, one way to get there. Not thinking that, you know, Donald Trump is basically pinnacle of man for himself. So is, uh, Zuckerberg or just name any amount of super successful guys, Dan Blitzerian, mm -hmm. each one of these guys, completely different spheres, completely different skill sets, but it's not even arguable that they haven't reached the pinnacle of the thing that they've decided to do as men. So to sit here and tell me that there, no, there's one path, there's one hierarchy and at the top is the ultra alpha male. And that guy's definitely not Rolo. Like, come on. I never it's, saw myself as, you know, I, yeah. I, I, you know, that's it. It's like, they want to say, well, you know, and Rich has said this before is like, you know, look at the guys who are your critics. Look at the guys who you're following. Are they guys that you would want to trade your life for? I don't think yeah. any guys really. Do I want to be a fat bald you, guy who married a single mom? Yeah. Do I want to be a guy who married a prostitute accidentally? Do I want to mm -hmm. be a guy who can't keep a girl for longer than a month? Yeah. Uh, what's another one of these guys I can talk about? Do I want to be a guy who's deaf? Like, like, what's the goal here? Mm -hmm. Why would you want to be like that? Do I want to run a porn site? Well, I guess a lot of guys do, but it's really easy to, and I, I have a little bit of problem with what Rich is saying, because I think most guys don't want to live other men's lives. I mean, maybe Dan Blitzerian. Okay. But even Dan Blitzerian is like, Oh, I want to settle down and have a have, you know, kids and everything. But then you sh shows another picture of him half an hour later with like 12 girls wanting to jump. Yeah. In his car. He doesn't really know any different. Can't hurt him. Can't blame him for that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, you want it. Sure. Um, and again, it's because uh, people are going to hear this. They're going to go, well, he's bad melting monogamy. No, I'm not. I've been monogamous for 23, 24 years now. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that monogamy is a, a is a good idea. It just needs to be regulated. It just needs to be from a red pill aware perspective. <laughs> it's it's a biological function. You need to be above it. You need yeah. to be above monogamy. Yeah. And that, <laughs> and that, and that gets me is like, yeah, you need to be above, like, I'm, I'm not suggest because one of the other uh, critiques I hear all the time is, uh, well, role is just telling guys to go just nail whoever plate spinning means go get, go get laid with as many women as you possibly unlimited access to unlimited sexuality, which is absolutely not what I'm talking about in that. In fact, I address that. I have six, uh, that's a six part series. Uh, the, the plate theory series. And, Every time somebody criticizes that, I look at that and I go, these, these are people who have not read that work because they don't understand it. But it's easy. It's easy to say, well, they're hedonists, right? Well, what was I just talking about? Like, it's easy to say he's a pickup artist. Um, he looks like Leisure Suit Larry. He, he has black fingernail polish, so therefore he's, he's the out group. 
He's the and guy. Again, that's like saying I'm offended. That's not even an argument. Mm-hmm. It's like a teenager. You know how teenagers, you've had a teenager, you know how mm-hmm. they argue with you where it's, uh, they just repeat what you said in a goofy voice and end it mm-hmm. with like a duh. Yeah. Mur- yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, so that's not really like, yeah, you're just a hedonist. Okay. And walk mm-hmm. me through where the issue is here. What's your problem? Mm-hmm. And they don't have a further thing. They just say, and like you said, they'll have to, uh, you can always tell the argument is poorly thought out the more abstract they have to go. If they start mm-hmm. talking about in the Roman Empire or saving the West, you can tell they've had to reach so far back into the abstract that they don't know why. They're just following a feeling that they have that this is wrong. Mm-hmm. Most likely because they learned their morality from their divorced mom or single mom or some or other non-masculine father. presence in their yeah. life. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm just gonna say, and I'm I'm looking at the chat here a little bit, and a lot of people are saying, well, you know, Roosh didn't, you know, Roosh's conversion to Christianity is is genuine. I I don't know. Sure, that's the thing. See, that's it. Is like you can't say no, you can't question it because it's subjective to the person who's saying. I like got Kanye West just came. But how out does that change Jesus anything either? Genuine. Even if it is 100 genuine and not a brand shift, like how does that matter? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, and then, then like I was just about, I was about to say is uh, Kanye West just came out with Jesus is King or something. And I've been noticing a lot of this in the in the Twitter sphere recently. <laughs> Speaking of guys who married prostitutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and so uh, that's going to be real interesting to see how that shift in his ideological bent, whether that's just sort of a play at a, at a new audience or if that's something that's genuine. Only time will tell. Right. So all I can do if you, people want to say, well, Roosh is really sincere. Oh, good. I hope he is. I really do hope he is. But I'm looking at the past behavior. Yeah. And what good does that what, do to anybody else? Either. Yeah. And so I can only go by what's what's happened in the past. So when uh, when guys suddenly, uh, you know, they are happy to talk with me and happy to happy to have me on their their podcast and talk about what I have been consistently talking about with for over 18 years now. Suddenly those guys say, well, you know, roll is wrong and roll. Everybody's abandoning you. And you so your ideas must be wrong. And, and, you know, it's like, no, it's a convenient bullshit cop out so that you can move your brand onto what you think is going to be more profitable in the future. Now that's the brand side of things. So my, my, you know, my focus for this, for this podcast is I want to make sure that guys understand why sex is important why it needs to be something that they're they're looking at, why they are going to try to solve their reproductive problems, whether their conscious mind is cooperating or not, or whether their conscious mind says, you know, I, I think what's interesting is guys will tell me like, well, you know, there's, there's all kinds of, uh, all kinds of monks live lives of celibacy because they have a higher purpose or I have a higher meaning or, um, you know, <laughs> I don't see a lot of people start in monasteries. I'll just say yeah, that, that, <laughs> that, that, and, and look what's happened in the Catholic church with respect to chi- you know, with, uh, you know, sexual abuse in, in the, I mean, it's been uh, the Catholic church, unfortunately has been defined by, you know, pedophilia in, in, in most cases has been defined by that. Yeah. And, I never thought they would outdo themselves with their pro Nazi stances in the forties, but Mm-hmm. <laughs> just when you think they can't do more they're like i got this fam well, because it's not <laughs> but why is that because it is not healthy it is not human nature to deny oneself sex it is a we need to find ways to solve our reproductive problems guys in mar in sexless marriages how do they solve that they go and they they jerk off the porn that's what it is really I mean, really you think about pornography today you know why is pornography uh ubiquitous why is it free you know why can you go on like what a porn hub or something like that and have like streaming porn you know right onto your you know you, you can do you can put do it right on your your smartphone why is that why is that free but like pretty much everything else is is you got to pay for you got to find some way to get you got to get behind a pay you have, to, you have to get behind a paywall to read an article on the new york times but you can go watch porn for free whenever you want to um so but why is that well because you know marketers understand that men's biological base imperative is a you know the best thing in life for men would be unlimited access to unlimited sexuality that's why we look up to guys like dan blitzerian it's not because he's a great businessman. Maybe I mean he probably like everybody to think that. Well, you know, I've got a great business going. I'm doing all this great stuff. But most people are looking at him because there's some hot chicks in his videos. I mean, let's let's be honest. And boy, wouldn't it be great to have like naked tens? And I am saying tens, yes. Um, it, you know, in Maui on surfboards, ready to bang you in the sur- you know, on the beach whenever you want to. 
development. That's, you know, what, what is the, what is the pinnacle of earthly success, right? If we say, well, if, if he's got, if, you know, he can have women, any woman, any time of the day, and they're fighting to get with him. And he's in right. real, I'm, I'm damn, but he's in good shape and he makes a lot of money. He's already got him. People saying, well, he's a trust fund baby and all that kind of stuff. I don't know how he made his money. Did he win it? Did he win in the I don't know. I thought it was, I thought it was, yeah, inheritance. inheritances, but inheritance. But, but does it really no. matter? That's like that same argument that steroids aren't real. Like, no, the guy gets muscles. If it's steroids, who cares? Yeah. If yeah. I really were to uh, have like a, well, I don't want to be Dan Blitzerian, it's that he's already had what, two heart attacks? Mm hmm. Like right there, I'm going. I don't know if the tens are worth a couple heart attacks by my forties. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean, and, whatever. Make you can make your choice. So what happens is he'll go on, uh, do an interview on I don't know where he was, sixty minutes or twenty twenty or some shit like that, and he'll say, "Oh, I really want to have a, a wife and some kids and settle down." And da da da. da. And it's like telling people what they need to hear. Yeah. Well, <laughs> guess what? You, you want know? me to tell you that even though I have all this, your life is still better. Oh well, these people are definitely going to buy Gillette razors now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. I mean, there's a, there's a, a part of us that says, wouldn't it be great to have what he has? When you know, we keep you know, Rich says, wouldn't it be great to, uh, you know, watch out for the guys that you are following? You know, would you want to live their lives? Uh, I think a lot of guys would look at what what he's doing, what Belisarian is doing, and they would say, man, that's great. That is like the pinnacle of earthly success. Earthly success. So we have to find some way to set ourselves above that. Well, that's okay. I pity him. You know, like you, you want to sit on your throne of judgment and say, well, I, I pity him because God's going to judge him one day or uh, he doesn't have, you know, well, uh, what were we talking about? Uh, Rich and I were talking about um, can money buy you happiness? And from in a direct sense, I mean, you have to ask, I, mean, I think happiness is really kind of a container word, like you say all the time, it's yeah. something that you have to sort of fill up. Um, is Dan Blitzerian really happy? No, but I am, even though yeah, I, he looks absolutely miserable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, because because sex is where we start as guys. We just it's just the way we're built. I'm sorry, we have 17 times the amount of, of testosterone that women do. Our 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 mating strategy is different than women. Women is cyclic. Ours is always on. Uh, why? Because we evolved for that. We had to. It's like John says, ejaculate and evacuate. We had to get in, get out, get it done and get out. Having yeah. the most opportunities is, is biological success. Evolved biological success for men is to mate with as many guys as they possibly, or many guys, with many girls as they can possibly do. Here, the funny thing on this too, it's actually part of my book. I think it's right early on in there. I was realizing mm -hmm. When you were bringing up the Dan Blitzerian guys were like, well, he has all this, but my life is better. Mm -hmm. That reminds me of my pickup days. I had a wingman, Mike, mm -hmm. way better at me at a pickup, like two to one. Mm -hmm. And I noticed every time I would lose to him, like obviously it's not a contest, but the competition works. Mm -hmm. I would make up some rationale as to why, well, yeah, sure. He may win this battle we're doing, but, and then I would mention something that has nothing to do with us going to run pickup. It's kind of an example of that Hillary, but Hillary won the, the, the uh, popular, popular vote. vote. Yeah. And I'm noticing this. This is a, a definitely self soothing mental model and it's not a healthy one. Mm -hmm. I've come to terms with it on my own. Like if you lose something to people, that's fine. There's always going to be a bigger fish. But I wonder if guys were self aware enough to realize that just by having to make that narrative that, well, Dan Blitzerian is just so happy, but I'm better. Mm -hmm. By definition, they're admitting that they're either jealous or they do understand that their outcome has been suboptimal compared to him. Mm -hmm. And this whole mechanism exists just to soothe the ego. So you don't have to accept that. Well, maybe I'm a loser. Yeah. And we build greater systems upon that as well. Mm -hmm. So that if we can say, and, and we do, and especially men and women as well, but we're, we're especially good at convincing ourselves of being, uh, more successful than we actually are because it's an ego. Yeah. Well, first of all, it's ego defense. And the other thing is like, it gives you, it's also an existential defense. Yeah. Um, now I, I'm, I'm going to, I, I really want to write an artic article about this one topic, but in uh, alpha God, there's a, uh, there's a section in there where um, he proposes that uh, depression is right. actually a, an evolutionary adaptation. Like it's an adaptation that predisposes uh, human beings, certain kinds of human beings. To oh, be, I think I've, to yeah, I've heard this. More, to be more submissive to, uh, because it's a survival instinct because unless, uh, you know, in, in primates, in primate cultures, right. If the, if the beta males don't submit to the alpha males, they can get killed. 
right? right? So when you lose, your testosterone drops. When you win, your testosterone increases. They've done studies of guys who like have watched their like sports teams win and they've taken like uh, testosterone samples. And, and they will say, you know, what well, if your your team won the Super Bowl and guys, that's that's what fem, feminists actually used to complain about this is that they did they wanted to boycott the the, the Super Bowl because <laughs> when their team lost or when their team won, it like and there was an increase in like domestic or sexual assault or you know, uh, marital, you know, assault <laughs> after and why is that? Because because men, people hate the they, Patriots that when, much. <laughs> when, yeah. when we as men, when we experience victory, when we defeat a rival we have an increase in, in testosterone and that doesn't even need to be real. That can be virtual and we feel better on build our, our testosterone up. Well, there's the opposite effect of that too. So when you're defeated, your testosterone drops and you're more inclined to be uh, depressed. That's what, that's one of the, uh, the symptoms of low T low T is uh, depression and um, you know, suicidal thoughts and, and, uh, there's a there's a whole that actually makes a lot of sense because mm -hmm. i'm thinking about and i don't want to bad mouth him any at all like the turd flinging monkey mm -hmm. very super loyal migtail fan base of guys who have essentially been sexual some migtails have been sexual losers mm -hmm. and i have not seen a fan base as adamant about defending their uh their personality as those ones mm -hmm. ddj yeah. too yeah but it makes yeah. sense if you've been so sexually denied for so long and then you have that much of a depression. And it, if this is true, mm -hmm. and then of course they're going to have a superly rabid, loyal fan base, mm -hmm. which makes sense why everybody's shooting for MGTOW as a, as a monetary brand right now. Mm -hmm. Like how would you not want a super loyal fan base to spend money on? What I, what I'm going to, what I'm going to, and this is an, another social experiment that I'm kind of thinking about is that right now in the MGTOW communities, I'm seeing a lot of guys who are what, are what I would call grifters. I would say they were red pill grifters, but they're not. They're actually MGTOW grifters. So they use the term MGTOW to uh, promote their life coaching as a MGTOW. I'm a, I'm a MGTOW life coach. And so I see a lot of guys sort of getting themselves into uh, into that sphere because it's easy that there's a built-in audience and a built-in uh, market base right yeah. there. Whose name may rhyme with Meg Daddams. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, so what I think is going to be interesting to see is within about six to six months to a year, I think you're going to see, I think that community really come out against those guys because they will try to change the nature of the game in the same way as what's going on in the red pill right now, they're going to say, well, you know, it's not MGTOW unless you have a wife or you, unless you believe in God or unless you, you know, all this. And so it'll be all this stuff. That's kind of, they'll say they'll, it'll be, it'll be the purple pill version of the MIG, of MGTOW. And there'll be a, an element of MGTOW that will go against that. And because that's just, you know, it's not real. It's not authentic. And it took them six, six months to a year to really realize that it, the inauthenticity of it. I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little off track here, but, um, as far as, uh, the importance of sex is concerned is I think that, uh, a lot of guys want to say that, um, there should be something more. You should focus on yourself more. And, and what I find really ironic is I pretty much, uh, you know, one of my most well-known quotes is that a woman should only ever be a complement to a man's life and never the focus of it. Yeah, in a lagging fact, indicator of success. In fact, if you are not focusing on your own self-development, if you're not focusing on your own ambitions and your own passions, and you have a, uh, you know, a more you know defined focus in life where you're going to want to go, like you again, be your own mental point of or mental point of origin. If, if that's not you, then you will not attract because women want a guy who has a function, has a purpose, has built, has made himself more than he is. They want to be, they want your job to be the other woman. They want to look up to you. They want to admire you. They want to seek out a man who will own them. They want to see, they want to be the remora fish. They don't want to be the prey. Right, right. And so so I can say that till I'm blue in the face, but then they'll say, well, Rollo just wants to talk about sex all the time. No, I don't. In fact, I, I'm saying, you know, you need to be more than you actually are. It's, it's great if you understand pickup artistry and you know the, the, you know, fake it till you make it, but do make it. You know, you have to make it. You have to actually do something with yourself. And maybe you're deriving confidence from your, uh, you know, from game or from knowing all this kind of stuff, but do make it. Do make yourself your own mental point. That, that, I, based half the damn book on on a mental point of origin yeah well it's such a nuanced statement that but it's so mm -hmm. obvious i'm surprised people still misinterpret it mm -hmm. yeah you like for 
sex. Sex is its category of things. It's something you pursue because you want it. Same as anything else you do in life. But the overarching goal is your own self-development or your own self-actualization. Uh, that's mm -hmm. just a non-controversial statement. I I have a hard time believing that people are honestly misinterpreting it as meaning guys chasing pussy. And that's all this is. Mm -hmm. Like that it had that. And you keep showing me guys that make me believe that it actually is. They truly believe that. I but think they do. Yeah. I have to believe it's grift. I, mm -hmm. ugh, but the shed guy, well, he really does. Grift works better when you actually believe the grift, when you're actually are an adherent of the, the cult that you are actually a, a part of, or the, I wouldn't say cult, but the, the mindset, the ideology, <clears throat> it's, it's easier for me to sell an ideology if I actually honestly believe in that ideology. And then, you know, maybe you do, maybe you don't. Like, I, I know that there's guys who are like, you know, you got the PT Barnum effect, like, oh, there's a sucker born every minute, right? They're those guys who are honest with themselves is a yeah. different animal than the guys who actually believe in the grift that they're that they're selling um and as far as i can tell right now i think a lot of what uh, i don't I'll call it a schism in the red pill right that's what happened. <laughs> that's actually the title of the video that roosh put out in 2015 the schism in the red pill and that's where we're at here we are four years later doing exactly the same thing and it's exactly the same motivation it's exactly the same arguments it's exactly the same crap from just from a different set of people and Joe, is it was it the same thing before like right now mm -hmm. guys who have been red pilled for a while and what i would consider i can't think of a better way to phrase it but senior members mm -hmm. they're all still on board things still chugging along smoothly still swapping notes still getting better it's always the guys that have been here for less than a year like the new guys that are creating this schism mm -hmm. was it the same thing on the previous implementations of these schisms between like pickup and all that well, it, the, or was the, it veterans spreading from other veterans okay the, the moralist argument comes out i i've seen this is probably like the third or the fourth time i've seen this come out i can remember back on so swap people came at me with the same thing because i was too i think i was too raw for him i was too visceral with, 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 <laughs> with my yeah i'm not gonna you know, pat myself on the back but i think i was i think that the the idea, and I wasn't even saying this is the way it is, and you have to believe me. I, I didn't say that. I just said, here's something to think about. And just me asking those questions or connecting those dots was too much. It was too much for them to because it conflicted with their ego investments in their convictions. And you'll get that a lot. I think I'm seeing that right now, really, in in, in the, the the most recent the moralist, absolutist schism that's going on in a red pill right now. And um Back then, I even wrote. I wrote uh, why one, my earliest posts were about, um, you know, the, why the red pill needs to stay amoral, apolitical, a religious, uh, because it needs to be a praxology. It needs to be as objective as possible. And that's another thing. I'm, I'm sort of glad you came on here uh, today because I think well, that one one of the other one of the other things that you and I have both been noticing is there's this want by the op opposition let's just say to yeah. to drag um to drag the red pill into being an ideology and i have always thought of it as a praxology and i until i until i even came across the term praxology i didn't know really what to call it but as a loose science or try to be as object i I'm, i like to think of the red pill in objectivist terms and so praxology works right yeah and so what I see happening right now is a lot of these guys who want to say, well, you need to find your higher purpose or you need to find higher meaning or sex shouldn't be the only thing you ever think about. Which is and, great. It's just outside the scope. But they always try to drag anything back to ideology. So because it's easier once you're challenged, well, because believers can only challenge other believers. They're only speaking the same language. So if you're a believer of one ideology and you have another ideology that is conflicting with that, then you can go to war. Then yeah, you can start super talking. tribal, isn't yeah. it? Then yeah, then you can go to war. Then you can start saying, "Well, their beliefs is wrong, and our beliefs is right." And and uh, um, yeah, exactly. Tribalism is what it'll end up being. But if I go and say, "No, it's not an ideology," and here's why, and here's why, if something changed in in the red pill, I'd be happy to. You know, if somebody said, "Well, Rolo, everything you said about hypergamy is wrong," and here's here's the uh, the scientific studies that prove it wrong. Oh yeah, okay. next edition would be out fixing okay. it. That's the thing. I think it's a difficult concept for people to understand that we're not attached to these ideas mm -hmm. people seem to think that like most red pill guys want to be hedonists that do nothing but spin plates mm -hmm. far from it if the tradcon lie were true we would be gutted overnight like there's no way a man wouldn't like lifelong sexually fulfilling monogamy mm -hmm. 
dying in each other's arms at 89 years old. Nobody, mm -hmm. and that's the thing that's been sold, but people aren't buying it. And there's a reason for it. It's because it doesn't work and it hasn't worked for a long time. You can't tell me about the, the benefits of marriage when I saw my entire town, 20, 30 family friends destroyed marriage as an institution for me. And there is no magic words you can use that's going to show me any different. Yeah. And that's the one thing I find it's hard because they're talking about, well, I know one guy who stayed married for 30 years. I'm like, great. I know a hundred that basically haven't seen their kids, including Bruno, who for some reason is still doubled down on the lie, even though he hasn't talked to his kids in 15 yeah, years. Because he's too starts... invested in the convictions. He's too invested in the belief set and the ideology and the ideological, you know, we want to talk about ideological purity. That's it. They never, yeah. never step away from that. And I, I, and always, I blame I, feminism for this, by the way, too. Back when feminism out. was anti-red pill, mm -hmm. we had an enemy. And so all these ideologue type guys or ideologue wannabes, they had something to fight. That's why that fight feminism crap was big there for a couple of years with Anthony. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because there was an enemy. And now that feminism has essentially said, oh, I don't really care. I'm too busy shitting on Trump. Mm -hmm. Now they don't have an enemy. And I refer to this one when uh, toxic masculinity comes up and how there's two subsets of guys. There's the apologists that say, well, we're not toxic. And they, they deer, they defend, excuse, explain, and rationalize. Mm -hmm. But then there's the other side that take it to be a definition. Well, toxic masculinity is at least masculine, so I'll own it. Now it becomes us versus them. And you're right. So now that we're now that they've lost this sparring partner, they're flailing about like, who do I fight right now? Mm -hmm. And that's where this schism is coming from, because these guys cannot function without. It's very Starship Troopers like, I think. If you yeah, get into it. yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, well, with the lack of an enemy, who do you fall down? You, you start fighting with each other, right? You start yeah. you start hitting on each other. Yeah. And, and um, gosh, you know, I, I see this break. Uh, the, I used to call this absolutists versus, you know, the red pill or whatever. Like there's this moral absolutism that goes along with this. And if they can find some way to say that you are against them or you're against their, their convictions in the, in the book that I'm writing, in the, the fourth book that I'm writing about the red pill and religion, I also talk about how it's a dangerous combination to try to unplug a guy from his blue pill ideology. There's blue pill, I say uh, his blue pill understanding of intersexual dynamics is blue, pill, you know, whatever it's, it's it, very dangerous to unplug them when that blue pill ideology is interwoven with their religion, because yeah. that's, that's that, because not only are you well, you're saying, fighting with the limbic brain, you might as well yeah. argue with a woman at that point. Yeah. So not only are you arguing the, 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 the truth about women's nature or, or showing them, you know, the red, red pill awareness, the, those truths also, conflict with a lot of their ideological understandings and sometimes those ideological and religious ideological understandings are actually inspired by the inner of the blue pill intersexual dynamics that they thought was the word of god or was the you know how how everybody should live their lives and, and i don't even think it's word of god either because there's so many things in the bible that people already compartmentalize away mm -hmm. like people don't people don't follow the no working on the sabbath anymore but for some reason, the red pill stuff, they don't compartmentalize it. So I think it's much more based right. than that. I think it's yeah. literally that Venus of Willendorf scenario, that right. worship of women, because like as a fertility they, goddess. Because and this and this, I'm gonna watch how I bring this back to the topic here. Ooh. It's because that that blue pill understanding is so in integral to to their understanding that when I talk about sex or I talk about that, and that's an, one of the things I also see is when they will defend the nature of women, they'll defend milady. Like if I say anything, if I make as marginal objective, uh, an observation of women's nature as I can, and that happens to be unflattering to women, they will jump to milady's defense. Yeah. And oh, even if you make it the absolutely worst one ever, Casey Anthony, well, what did her husband do to drive her to that? Like it just yeah. cannot accept yeah. responsibility. Yeah, there's just there's just no. Yeah, exactly. And and of course, and then we want to find qualifiers. Well, though that woman wasn't a quality woman. I know what a quality woman is because my ideological belief set uh, informs me what it is. Well, that ideological belief set is actually informed by blue pill, you know, blue pill understanding because it benefits whatever benefits women. So that's why when when the blue pill and when feminism and when the feminine imperative sort of assimilate itself into religion. It goes straight to guys' most visceral um, 
you know, need, which is sex. Yeah. So to protect how do, mommy from dad. Yeah. Protect mommy from dad, protect milady from, you know, uh, from other guys. That's another thing that these guys are talking about is like, well, these guys are trying to tell guys to go out and have, have wanton sex with any woman, uh, available to them. And that's what plate spinning really is. And what that does is it ruins our poor virginic yeah. pure, like women are only the way they are because men allow them to be, or men, uh, uh, prompt them to be they wouldn't yeah. be they really wouldn't be you know uh you know sexually display they wouldn't be into uh everything that the red pill says about sexual orientation and women's cyclic sexual nature they really Which, wouldn't do that it's just because exactly. those guys are, are our are, fault are, 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 and there's are, two big problems with that too the first one is they're taking away the idea that women have their own wants and desires mm -hmm. women are no longer people in their eyes women are set pieces to their traditional ideological view mm -hmm. So when you dehumanize somebody like that, it's very off-putting for me, especially when they talk about not only the dehumanization, but the pedestalization. Mm -hmm. And it kind of reminds me of a very, a Disney movie, PG-13 version of Shiara Law. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm sure you see it where all these guys talk about respecting women. It's my girl never, never drives ever. I'm like, that's funny. The Saudis have that as a law too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. And they don't understand that it's exactly the same stuff you're seeing in these ultra repressive regimes. The only difference is they want, they don't want the girl to comply. They want her to believe as well that she should be put into a garbage bag and not allowed to drive or not supposed to talk to men unless it's to make babies. Right. right. And then they'll say, well, some women like our women, our, the women of our tribe, the, qual yeah. the quality women, whatever that is, right? The women of our tribe aren't hypergamous. They know better. They are taught better. They're raised by better families. They're raised in a different cir circumstances. And, and if they do, it's your fault for letting it happen. Yes, exactly. Like uh, So essentially, women's nature are is the fault of men is the yeah. fault because we're so and and that's uh, I should also but say they that. won't take responsibility for it. it's the problem that's why everybody should be doing something mm -hmm. should is just I want with the side helping of I don't want to take responsibility for wanting it and the feminine imperative sees that and it uses that and it almost plays it back on them saying like well men uh, we live in a patriarchy yeah right? topping from the bottom men have all the power so yeah, you're right. We're only the, we're only bad because you guys are weak because you guys are weak in a, in an environment where you actually probably should be strong. And so they play into that. That's really what, uh, when I talk about chivalry, chivalry was actually feminism 1.0 because yeah. they saw this, they saw these rules that guys were making up for themselves in their idealistic nature, making up for, you know, how, how do, how should men, how ought men Re, you know, relate with other men, you know, and well, let's be chivalrous and never hit the man when he's lying down and never, you know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> and, and so it was all about guys. Well, women yeah. saw that and they go, how can we make that work for us? And so they said, well, a chivalrous man, a real man should you know, act like a Victorian romance should, novel should act. Yeah. Well, a real man will, uh, will sacrifice for milady. He will defend milady's honor. He will, the women of, he will defend the women of his own tribe. Because they believe, they really believe like he does. And because those men, they were, they're right. They're right. They understand what women's nature is, but it's not. <laughs> it's, it's this socialized understanding of what women's nature should be because it's, it's a, it's a learned thing rather than, oh, I see the nature here. Um, yeah. So I, I'm bringing this all the way back. The last thing I was going to say is that um, a lot of guys will, um, will say that sex isn't that important or uh the red pill shouldn't be that important we shouldn't we're, we're, we're all too focused yeah, shouldn't. on sex. i don't want it to be important but yeah. i'm not going to take responsibility we're all for that. too we're all too focused on sex we're all too focused on our dicks right we're all too focused on us but then when i i point out things uh like when i did the uh when i did my very first speech uh, about hypergamy micro to macro i i tried to stress anyways in the macro side of things that Women's sexual strategy is really right now, anyways, is what's driving our political discourse. It's driving yeah. what our social discourse is right now. So yes, it is important to understand sex and it is under, to understand your sexual dynamics and sex is that important. Not just guys getting laid or jerking Weaponized porn. Thirst. It's, it's why, did, uh, why did a female FBI agent decide that she was gonna leave her husband and go take up with a, uh, an ISIS uh, warlord? Right. Yeah. Well, or why did somebody bring up the genuine argument that women should no longer be put into prison for crime? Right. Why do? Yeah, exactly. Why do we have a separate standard of justice for women? Well, 
because sex is that important. Sorry. Which is but crazy because the Magna yeah. Carta, I thought we had that sorted out hundreds of years ago. Isn't mm -hmm. that where they kind of said that, yeah, there is no royalty that are divine by God and men and everybody's treated somewhat equally under the law. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. we're going right back to this tribal pre medieval time. It's like a newfound cultural dark ages. And I don't like it. Mm -hmm. And I think that these guys really don't understand. They either have the knowledge of history or maybe they're just having such suboptimal strategies that they would rather burn it all to the ground and make a new happy, fun, go lucky Shiera law mm -hmm. than to actually work at getting better at right. their own lot in life. All right. So here's what I'm going to, I'm going to answer Fiji waters little bullshit here. Okay. He's like, you know, chivalry is one. he's laughing at, you know, saying that Andrew Tate or, or Dan Blitzerian and Playboy's hair are a natural state of being. No, they're not, but they would, are they not? Well, they would, would certainly like them to be. Like when I say let's, you know, when I tell guys to, well, I don't know enough about Paleolithic uh, tribal mating practices. I that's just remember funny. You should read Alpha God because in there, <laughs> um, he goes through how um, primates will do exactly the same thing. They will, um, they will keep a certain like a harem of the female primates there, and the alpha right. male will only allow breeding. He only gets breeding rights with them, but he'll only allow. Uh, beta males he actually controls the beta males um sexual access to the women in his harem in uh in gee human, does that sound like a war room to you yeah in in <laughs> humans okay but here's the thing in human society we see uh and and this is in tribal tribal hunter gatherer society this is the most you know our yeah. as men we want to ensure paternity and we want to ensure paternity with the most uh, you know unlimited access to unlimited sexuality um, yeah, it feels good, but there's a latent purpose to that. So what? So it's been in cross culture, across the planet, is powerful men, powerful alpha tribal male leaders have cloistered women together in in harems. They put like uh, there was he was he was talking about this one um, uh, this one tribe that would the the chief would take all the women and put all the good the breedable age women and put them in a camp and build walls around it and they would why do we have eunuchs that guard the harems because we want to know that those guys aren't going to aren't going to mate with our chicks yes it is the natural state it's a natural state to want to have sex with many women that's why guys want variety that's why we I don't understand why I'm I'm addicted to porn that's why because pornography online pornography is your harem you're just, you're and just, that's the thing too. Those virtual guys but yeah. that are addicted to porn, let's say they have good sex lives with their wives. They probably don't, but let's say they do. Mm -hmm. They shouldn't even be against porn because if porn is that way of expressing your need for variety while still maintaining a monogamous marriage, to me, that seems like a successful strategy mm -hmm. within their ideological framework. Mm -hmm. If you want yeah. one man, one woman for life, well, then have like porn going nonstop. So that way you get it all out of your system. Mm -hmm. And then she's just one of your virtual wow. harem. Right. Uh, now, I, I know Tom Bombadil here was was being facetious. Here he says Jesus is the largest harem. It's called nuns. Guess what? You're a hundred percent right, because that's why they, that's why they reserve themselves to be the brides of Christ. We even call them the brides of Christ. Like the church is supposed to be the brides of Christ. There is, uh, and again, in Alpha God, Hector Garcia talks about this a lot. Is that even in, especially in Catholic, because uh, Catholic he, he hits on Catholicism because it's more structured and it's easier to understand. I think. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, but like there is um there he was he's actually quoting some nuns, some like because what we do, we put nuns in the convent and we have like Jesus is the top you can't get more alpha male than Jesus, at least from a spiritual sense. You can't get more alpha male than than God, than a male, you know, capital H he as God. You can't get more alpha than that. So oh yeah, it's the we, Christian answer to hypergamy. Oh, okay, yeah, well, exactly. here's your best option. It's Jesus. Uh, yep, you got it. And that's, and it's funny. I, I know you were joking, but you're, but that's. Oh, no, totally, I, just because I'm saying it. Or not, I mean, he was way. joking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and, but, so, but here's the thing is that, and again, we get back to that submission, right? What, what is, why, why do, we, why is it that we, like lesser males should submit? to a, a greater male why is it that women are, should submit to men you know it's it used to be it used to be anyways that uh it was children then women then man and then god right yep. and that's that's how it was supposed to be anyways but how do successful men you know even in gosh i, I really got to get abu american on here uh, to, to talk about the muslim side of things because muslim society still kind of falls into this you know they can have four wives 
why okay why is that part of the thing because a harem is the is what most men if they had access to it if they had unlimited access to unlimited sexuality that's what they would do that's what yeah, they designed their entire concept of heaven around mm -hmm. it now here's a here's another part i was going to say is one of the reasons why these guys who hate on pickup artists um or and i i i'm not picking on I'm, some migtows um <laughs> hate hate on puas is because or they will say I think that a lot of MGTOWs don't want guys to become PUAs, but that's, and that's the character that they're building. I'm just using that as a terminology. They don't want guys to interact with women because they're afraid that those guys are going to, in some way, screw their brothers. Or that if we're all, we all need to be playing the same game. We all need to, uh, you, you shouldn't go after women because it makes you seem more dominant than me. And I think I think uh, and if MGTOWs want to confront me on this, I'm happy to answer you in the in the uh, the comments about this. But it seems to me that whenever I I encounter this argument against why guys shouldn't be PUAs or why the, it, the, it comes from this perspective. Yeah, of, again, shouldn't I want yeah, it with a side yeah. effect of I don't want to take responsibility for wanting it. OK, so there's the rationale, which is you don't you know, you don't want to lead the lambs to the slaughter. You don't want guys to get me too. You don't want guys to lose a like they're doing it out of the goodness of their hearts. Right. I don't right. want you. I don't want to see you go through a divorce and lose half of your shit. I don't want to see you lose your kids. I don't you know. So so don't get married. Don't deal with women. So it's, it's one thing to say don't get married and don't get don't legally bind yourself to a woman. Right. It's another thing yeah. to say to discard women altogether. Right. Well, why? Why? Why would you? Why would some MGTOWs say that? Um, because I think that it is a way of tr they're trying to balance the sexual marketplace. It's a, it's trying to balance their level the playing field in the sexual marketplace. So I don't even think it's that noble. I think it's just every time a pickup artist gets laid, it's like rubbing their noses in it. And I think mm -hmm. honestly, it's a very, it's an ego salve. The superior man, the guy with the higher sexual market value is the guy that women want. They call him chads. Yeah. That's why, you know, that's why they hate on the chads because it is a superior male that has breeding rights to at least one and then probably more women. Yeah. So, so how they don't hate Chad because he's Chad. They hate Chad because he won't commit when they want him to. So how does a beta male compensate? How does a smart beta male compensate for that? He can't compete on the alpha males ground. So you've got to find some ways to disqualify that alpha male or change the nature of the game so that the alpha male plays the same game that you are the and pink so pussy has a perfect example of that mm -hmm. and and so what and this is actually a historic thing here too is like because we have socially enforced monogamy right now um mm -hmm. And we've had at least, you know, post -agri agrarian humanity, right? We've had monogamy has been the rule uh, rather yeah. than polygamy, right? Well, was it because of agriculture or was it because of the invention of private property that well, monogamy it, became that the... Because agriculture would imply, you know, farming and stuff that this property is mine. And therefore, we, we the idea of owning land was was a thing. And that this right. is again, this is theoretical. I, I this is uh, evolutionary anthropology is what this is. <laughs> um, I know, but let's put evolution in front of it. Um, but what happens is when we enforce one of the, I should say, one of the byproducts of socially enforced monogamy is that it limits guys who would otherwise naturally have access to more women and have access to a harem. It brings them psychologically into the fold. It, 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 so if you're an alpha guy, but you're brought up in a Christian religion or you're brought up in a maybe even a Muslim religion, if you're brought up in a conservative way of thought that says only one man, only one woman, that right there or, or uh, another great one, uh, the soulmate myth, right? There's only one oh, person yeah. for you. There's only God has ordained you to have this husband or this wife or whatever. So there's only one perfect match for you. Such right? a dehumanizing thing, too. She exists to mirror you in every way. Mm -hmm. She doesn't have her own path, no her own mappings. She's literally you. Yeah. And so you with a vagina. So when when you can, so I, I see this, and I'm not saying this is totally what monogamy is about, but it's certainly a byproduct that socially enforced monogamy psychologically conditions alpha males to think that they can only or that they're the only right way to have a relationship is with one woman is only to stay with that one woman F uh, marry your high school sweetheart that's well yeah it puts everybody on the same page. and it puts everybody everybody will have a woman the most everybody needs to protect reproduce. her mm -hmm. yeah and the most men and, and i've heard women relate to it as this is like monogamy is only good for beta males 
And, and we'll say, well, what about women? Well, the thing is, is though women are forced to reproduce with guys who are not their, their hypergamous optimal, right? So if we are, if we say, and this is why I say we're sort of leaning towards a poly, uh, a polygamous polyandrous um, mating strategy. That's what our society is in the future going to be made, uh, predicated on, um, is because if in polygamy, more women can share the share the alpha. This is uh, yeah. this is Pook 101, right? Which is women would rather share an alpha than be saddled with a, a faithful loser. Well, that is only true um, in an era where women, where the the side, where provisioning and the security side that a beta male used to have a lock on is already provided for by women. So now they're going to be start you know looking for those alpha males. So we can't condition alpha males anymore to think in terms of one man, one woman. Right. That's why we're, when we look at leftists and we look at progressivism and we look at the, or the poly, uh, you know, po the, the rise of polyandry or polysexual, whatever you want to call poly, you know, like uh, non-exclusive, yeah. you know, non-monogamous relationships, which is kind of really, it's interesting to me that we would say, a, we, would, we would say this is a relationship, but it's not monogamous. It's almost like Monogamy and the word relationship have been synonymous for a long time. Now we're trying to break that synonymousness, I guess, from from those terms because women don't need no they don't need no man, but they don't need no beta man. They, yeah. they still need the alpha guy because they still want to reproduce with that guy and they're willing to share that guy. But in a yeah. non monog and the non socially enforced monogamy monogamous society, those and beta males are no longer needed. And if people think this isn't a local thing too, I'll put a scenario for you. Great example of how this sharing an alpha male thing works. Picture the high status guy married has a side piece or a mistress, which is mm -hmm. basically French culture. And she oh. will stick with him for years on the promise that he's going to leave his wife for her. So if you're ever wondering like there's women don't actually would rather share a man like they do. And it happens. It may not be all women, but it happens enough that it's a phenomenon. You can wrap your strategy around. Mm -hmm. Razor had a uh, razor. Why you had a really good superhero. I'm just going to read this. It says, how come society hates on men who have harems, but they dare not speak negatively about women who have insane variety of men at their beck and call. Well, wow. because women buy things because we are uh, exactly what I just said, because we're still stuck on the idea that men should be monogamous and women should be, should have access to the best. Right. I mean, that's actually part of that, that moral conviction defend milady's honor she should we should support women we need to get in touch with our feminine side we need to build women up we need to fem power women well part of that fem empowerment is saying you know is is holding men to one standard and not holding women to the same standard right now That's and it's funny because women don't like that either at least a lot don't i'm actually mm -hmm. very surprised now that i'm getting a lot more female followers and they're dming me stuff how like they're depressed and they can't find a man who does it right and mm -hmm like the visceral reaction to that uh, throat fucking thing that was happening today. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. That, yeah. If you guys really want, did you see what I posted? Go away. Did you see what I posted in that? Dude, I've been laughing at that thread yeah. all day. I it's posted awesome. a, I posted a, a Cheryl Sandberg's um, hypergamy, hypergamy. The, the, the bad boy thing. Yeah. Yeah. I posted that in there. But that's mm -hmm. just it. Like if these girls think it's such a revolting thing or guys think it, Oh, I would never do that. I'm like, yeah, the reason that she's asking for it so bad is because you would never do that. Mm -hmm. If you yeah. just did a little bit of hair pulling, these girls wouldn't need to go more and more extreme to finally like feel what it's like to have that alpha male in her life. So it's literally a girl begging you to stop pedestalizing her and treat her like a human being. If anything, mm -hmm. red pill men are the most equalistic because we actually treat women as people. Yeah, because which always makes me laugh nature, because we understand the nature of women. That's right. Because we <laughs> we well. I, we have a better understanding, let's say, of, of nature. And I, again, then you know, last but not least, I'm gonna get. I'll get onto the super chats here in just a second. But um, I think that in this in this new schism in the in the manosphere, when people want to say it, sex shouldn't be that important, it's also that wanting or that reining in of guys who would even pretend to be alpha guys who would want to say, you know what? I read what Rolo said. I've changed my life. I've got more. I finally cured my virginity. I'm doing, I'm doing better with women right now. Um, yeah. and they now wanna, I'm off on a bigger and better thing. And, awesome. and guess, and what that means to them is that, well, uh, if you have, you're, you're exploring or you're, um, you have access to a greater number of women, right? 
your your harem really is just whoever's out there, whatever chick is available on a Saturday night, right? That's yeah. your harem of women. Who, are you? in fact, that's that's actually why guys get addicted to game because it's the thrill of the hunt. If I, I, oh, I, the I, hunt was the most fun. I Troy actually is, uh, Troy would be a good one to talk about with that. Yeah, but that's the thing. We don't even have to have like singular harems anymore. Now with online dating, mm -hmm. it's almost like a shared harem. There's just a pool of girls mm -hmm. on Tinder out to have fun. They're going to have multiple guys on there. So they have their soft harems and the guys have their soft harems. So it's like this matrix, mm -hmm. which is an ingenious way to get around the problems of uh, polygamy. Because like you said, if there's 10 men, 10 women, two guys have all the women, eight guys are disgruntled and probably going to start going on shooting sprees. Mm -hmm. Instead, if you just have 10 people with soft harems, which is unrealistic, but at least then it solves the problem in the same way that enforced monogamy does. Mm -hmm. So you can say you agree with it or not, but at least it's a strategy that addresses the actual problem without saying should. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now, I, I don't know if I'd argue for it, but I'm just saying I understand why it's there. Well, I mean, when you look at things from like uh, uh, when you look at the criticisms that are thrown at at the red pill um, from the perspective of uh, their investment in their ideology, their investment in their in their convictions, how the blue pill has kind of molded those convictions to be what they are so when they see something like when i see a guy going out and having sex with multiple chicks i you and i've joked about this before is like a guy yeah. like steadman gets pissed off at guys like me who give the tools to guys who can go out and say hey you can go out and, and have sex with your harem right your virtual harem that's out there use these tools figure it out for yourself build something with us and then let me know what you did right well that is in some way ruining women who have no agency, right? And um, just, didn't he also post it like you're ruining his wife specifically? Well, no, it's <laughs> like, well, here's what he says is, is that um, guys like guys who go out and use game, guys who are pickup artists ruin women for their future husbands. Right. right. Like when, and, and we've talked about this before is that, you know, when women have multiple partners because men and women are different women, if they have multiple partners, they have a less, they're less likely to form healthy attachments in marriage to their guy. I, I've oh, written about the pair bonding argument. Well, this is actually the, the saving the best kind of thing, right? So when a, when a girl finally gets to the point where she's in her epiphany phase and she finds her dutiful, like Sam Bergian plan of, of hypergamy, she finds her dutiful beta at the end of the game, right? Then she's got, she's damaged or she's had sex with like 10 other guys who are just like the guys that Rolo tries to build up, right? And so therefore she's ruined because uh rollo gave these guys the, the skills to go and ruin them by having oh, sex with is them this on, that the, thing? on a friday night right and so, so I was thinking they saving the that best. ruination and they married into that damage that 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 these guys cause like no it's a uh, uh, leave her better than you found her yeah, yeah this reminds me of something though very funny how there's a lot of guys who have that saving the best from your article moment mm -hmm. where they find examples of their girl doing we'll say anal we'll just use anal here mm -hmm. she did anal with everybody else except for me and then all of a sudden the guy who didn't want anal before now he wants anal, which makes mm -hmm. it our fault for, you know, exposing that, you know, women do things like this. Mm -hmm. She says she's not into it anymore. She tried it. She doesn't like it. And we have something better. Mm -hmm. I wonder if a part of that is, well, maybe if she didn't have other men before me, I'd be the one that gets to try anal that for gets her. her sexual best. Yeah. yeah. And that's why I called it saving the best because in that, but they never take it. They just command it. They're like, she should want to give it to me. It's like, why don't you go take it? Right. Yeah. Like why, that throat why fucking is a wonderful her, example. Why don't you put her in the position? Why, why are you fearful of experimenting with her? Why are you fearful of, of offending her sensibilities? Right. Well, because you've been raised as a beta, because you've been raised as, uh, you know, you, because your convictions are such that, um, that you've been taught not to do something like that, not to, because you're afraid. And then again, it's a scarcity mentality. This is for lesser males who are, are focusing on only one woman because they don't know when their next meal or their next girlfriend is going to come from. Should and then they get mad at you because you're basically rubbing their nose in it. Well, that's part, <laughs> that's part of it too. But the other thing is like when that woman, they, they finally marry and they think that their ship has come in. She comes with baggage. She comes with problems. She comes, she's an alpha widow. She's pining for the guys that were, yeah, she she's a human being who had issues. Yeah. And so, so, but so it's not, we can't blame her because she's sinless and blameless. So who do we blame? Well, those horrible alpha guys who are basically trying to solve their reproductive problems, right? They want to have it. She was part of a harem at some yep. point. And, uh, and if and they, she wasn't and damaged, those pickup artists would have probably locked her down. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. That's something these guys forget when they talk about, well, you're damaging the women. It's like a high notch count doesn't damage women, but damaged women have a high notch count. Mm -hmm. So if you meet a girl who's had a hundred dicks in her and you're her first boyfriend that she's had, and she's 34. Well, the dicks aren't what damaged her. She was damaged before and the dicks were what she used to try and soothe her ego. Mm -hmm. So they're really putting the cart before the horse this one on this one as well. Mm -hmm. And maybe they're mad because the ones that are left over when they, you know, after I've turned 30 and have my good job in IT, now what women are available? And of course, they're going to have the ones that nobody else wanted. Mm -hmm. There, It's like the life script version of being at the bar at 1245 and last call mm -hmm. and frantically looking around for somebody before they turn on the lights. Yes, yes, yes. And so, and then finding a reason or finding a, a convenient <laughs> enemy to say, yeah. well, you're, and now we take that. We, okay, so that's the basic script. Now we extrapolate that into like a, a social scope. And we say, well, that's what's ruining society. We say those guys, men's men's uncontrolled sexual nature is what's ruining society, which is essentially what feminists have been saying about toxic masculinity for a very long time. So it almost mirrors what feminists have been saying. And so what I think is interesting anyways is guys taking, you know, taking offense that other guys might want to teach them how to uh, how to be well. First of all, to be better men, and the second of all, to understand the nature of women, to understand how to do better with women, and uh, and and what are the reasons and what are the motivations behind saying sex shouldn't be that important to you? Um, they want you like lesser men will always want greater men to desexualize themselves because it's if I can it's it's one thing to to convince your friends. Or, or your girl, like the girls around you, to convince them that, well, he's he's good looking, but he's probably gay, right? To disqualify him as a sexual yeah. competitor, that's one thing. It's another thing to go up to him and say, you know what? You're living the wrong life. You shouldn't be hitting it with all these girls that I eventually am going to marry. You need to get with one. You need to find your soulmate. So so there's there's disqualification, and then there's getting inside the head of the guy who is the superior competitor and having him disqualify himself. And yeah, doing selling him enough. Amway products. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> to, to get he's your downline, right? You got you have to find some way. You have to find some way to it's gaslighting, you know, get inside of his head and say, you shouldn't be living the way that you are because the way that you're living isn't conducive to my own sexual strategy. And so that's why you get, I mean, you know, human beings are smart. We find ways to, you know, adaptations and get around. Uh, other, uh, men will always try to find ways to get around the sexual mating strategies of other men. And that's Here's the question for you. Do you think it's effective? Because I know for, let's say, a, a mom and a dad fill a kid's head with this nonsense. The kid's young. The kid's impressionable. I can totally see it working there. Mm -hmm. Let's say a full-grown man coming to the manosphere, finding his, oh, I found my Pat Stedman. Thank God. And he starts filling his head with this nonsense when he turns out to be a natural. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's going to have any sway? Or do you think he's doing it to grandstand for the kind of guy who wants that to be true? Where you can sure. talk... AJ Cortez or whatever his name is talk him into like getting rid of his wicked ways. Yeah. What do you mean? Like, as in like, can you talk a Chad down from that success from that? Or is success? it just that the yeah. guys who want that to be true will buy onto I, that? Trend? I think, I think you could, if you were in a society or in a social order that did that, um, right. That, that said you need to be, like, it could be actually, it could be, I, I think it is really part of men's sexual conditioning to be in control of their sexual nature. We don't do that with women right now because we've never really had to. We're still lo looking at women at post-sexual revolution as the, this great intersexual experiment. We've unfettered yeah. hypergamy. And, uh, and in addition to that, we've said, you know what, you know, uh, and women, we want you to police your the worst atrocities of your hypergamy. No woman's going to do that. They're never going to yeah, do that. Yeah, slut shaming is the best you get, but it's no. the same thing here. Here, speaking of men raised as defective women, how is this any different than slut shaming applied from a male Backwards. perspective? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're uh, you are you're 100 right. That's it's male slut shaming. Here, you're a uh, you're a what is it? Man whore, you're a man whore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, at least I'm a man. You're, I'll take it <laughs> because you're, because you're, okay. I'm gonna um I'm gonna move on to. We're almost done here. I want to move on okay. to the uh, these these uh, super chats because one of these you you're gonna want to hear. Uh, I got. Let's see, Rolo. When can you we get your book in Spanish? Uh probably after book four. Um, I've got people who want to translate it, and Spanish will be the first language. I really have to be careful with Spanish because I know that next to English, that will probably be the most popular language, and I need to get in with some guys who really know what the hell they're doing. 
um, you know, and not just from the translation. I mean, I can read Spanish actually, but I have to get with guys who know how to market it and understand the manosphere. So I can, you should get one of those translators from the UN. I've heard they're very good at this yeah. stuff. No, that's like their whole role is the natural speaking language, but then they have to be equally natural in the translated one. Mm -hmm. Okay. So motorcycle Harry gives me a 199 for the tip jar. Thanks brother. Here's the one I wanted to talk about. Uh, TB 88, 10 bucks. He says, I get what you mean about trads, but isn't it the genetic fallacy to discount their objections based off of motive or assumed intent? It can be right or wrong, regardless of presumed ulterior motive. So basically it's like, what, again, that's crisis of motive is what this is. Are they doing this because of, uh, the, because of a genetic re reason or are they doing it because they actually believe in it? Who cares? Right. They're telling you what to do. And if they're going to tell mm -hmm. you what to do, they better come up with a reason why it benefits you to do so. Mm -hmm. And to date, I have not seen a reason to sacrifice my own sexual strategy to appease this trad type argument. They've mm -hmm. offered nothing in exchange. Yeah. And where do, where do we go with that? And all I want to say, well, you're going to have two kids and a baby and uh, you know, you're going to have a, a dog in the yard and you'll live this idyllic, you know, nuclear. Yeah. Here's your life. narcissistic fantasy. So buy into it and swear to God it's true. Yeah. And then and get mad if it doesn't must, turn out. I, I, I think also what he's getting here is, and I'll answer this part is I think that like when you, when I asked you on Wednesday where the question yeah. was, do these guys really believe this or are they doing it because they have like a, uh, a functional motive behind it? Okay. Uh, I think they actually believe this. I think they actually are locked into it, but they don't know why they believe it. They're not aware of the latent purpose that that belief that they're trying to enforce on other guys is. They're just so going through feelings. They're, well, they don't, they don't understand. Like, like they it just, as far as they're concerned, because they, they believe, well, I mean, and I'm, forgive I'm, them I'm, Lord for they know not what they do. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I, I can't, I, this is me speculating here too, but I, I, the reason I argued that that guy, Josh really believed in what he was talking about is because he probably was, he probably really, he was, seemed like he was at least, um, you know, genuine or authentic with what he, you know, he really wants you to come to Jesus and, you know, he's Jesus, right? But yeah. he really wants you to do that, but he may, he might not understand why he is doing that. Like he's been taught to believe in a certain conviction and that, uh, that he, as part of his conviction, he needs to spread that, spread the gospel, right? Whatever right. that gospel is, he needs to spread that, but he doesn't understand the functionality of spreading the gospel. He just knows that hey, that's what he's supposed to do. Yeah, dad and mom say this is the way it is and that's it. Mm -hmm. And that is and and I I'm, I'm I'm saying I'm using gospel as sort of a catchphrase here because that could be anything. That could be but we could say well that's the red pill. Well, that's the trad pill. That's MGTOW. That's whatever, right? You don't know why you're why you're saying what you're saying or maybe you have a little bit of education, maybe you know enough, but you don't understand the functionality. You don't understand the 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 why you got to where your belief set is. You just yeah. know that you should believe in it and that you should spread the belief, right? Well, it's like an aspirational narcissistic fantasy. Mm -hmm. He was talking about what was his unconditional love. I love you. That's his narcissistic fantasy there, the unconditional mm -hmm. love. And it was aspirational because we're not there yet, but I'll get you there with three easy payments of twenty nine ninety five. or in right. Stedman's case, I don't know what he sells. 700 for three hours, right? Um, <laughs> Bjorn has this question. It says, since reproduction getting laid is a problem to be solved. What do you think is the best to solve it? The best way to solve it? Pursuing I say mystery method, but a lot of people swear <laughs> by the London model. Yeah. yeah. Uh, pursuing it obsessively until it is solved or leave it to subconscious and let things happen. Um, I am not Ooh. a proponent of ignorance is bliss. I think that, well, yeah, one of either. the, well, Interesting you should ask that question because what was the first thing that guys did when they got the internet, when they finally could get together and compare notes on, on alt fast seduction or so suave or and these, and these early forums that came out in the beginning where the internet was brand new. What did they do? They said, how do guys, how, you know, finally have access to men around the world. How are we going to figure out how to get laid? How are we going to figure out how to solve our reproductive problem? The other yeah. problem, the other thing, I, the, the problem I have with your question here, Bjorn, is this, is that it doesn't end. OK, a guy who's 80 years old still wants to get laid. He still wants to figure out and maybe he can't. And maybe he you know, maybe the testosterone isn't what it used to be, but he still has that desire to get laid. He still wants to find some way to solve his reproductive problem, even after what we would consider. Well, he's had kids, so he solved the problem, right? Yeah, tell that to Jack. It's constant. Yeah, it's constantly going. It's it's a subroutine. That's part of our part of who we are. And yes, 
are we just animals that we can we can't control it? No, of course not. We can control it. We have higher cognition. We have we're a little we're we're you know we're animals, but we're more than animals. We can figure yeah. out how to do that. We have control of our we're own really really animals. smart animals. Yes, actually, so, I think you hit onto the answer earlier too when you were saying about how a lot of guys get addicted to the chase. Yeah, if you mm -hmm. want to talk about putting pussy on a pedestal, I think the chase is a great counter to that mm -hmm. because it's not about the woman. It's about I like being in this situation where I create seduction. And if it happens or it doesn't happen, like if I get mm -hmm. laid, whatever. But the fact that I ran an awesome routine, had a great time, and that sex was definitely a goal that kept me motivated and focused. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. that could be a good answer to her question. Yes, focus on it, but make uh, make it success a byproduct of a life well lived. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I was another thing I was going to say is because he was saying is, is what about subconscious? Like, why don't you just let things happen? That's actually I would another reason I would argue Works against great that. for women. Yeah, it works for right. but it also but it doesn't work so great for guys who are natural alphas because nope. most of the time when a guy doesn't like analyze why he's successful with women he like he's good looking it's why you know if it ain't broke don't fix it why ask questions if it's i, I i'm just naturally good i'm lucky with the ladies right if i'm naturally like that the problem is, is if you don't analyze that if you don't become even alpha guys who are naturals should learn red pill they should learn uh red pill awareness and understand why things work the way that they do because it will help them stay out of bad situations that they would naturally get into because they didn't think about it i know and the superstitions. I, know, I know so many guys who i would call natural alpha males who have solved their reproductive problem they have had like you know three children with two different women right or or maybe they knocked up their high school sweetheart and they got you know they they've they've left a trail of of uh, of pregnancies behind them because they never really thought about what it was that they were doing so yeah i from both sides of that i would say it's better to it's better to know than not to know uh, Razor yeah. YU, I think we talked to this. How come society hates on men? Okay, we ever talked to that one. Chris B in Philly gave us 10 bucks. Thank you, brother. Um, he says, how can you be uh, alpha widow, say, after 40? Uh, ask a 40-year-old girl. I don't know. Um, well, because you've been living for the last 40 years, well, I would say probably the last 20 years because it would probably be in your party years that you become an alpha widow, um, and you haven't found a way to successfully get back to that feeling, to get back to what you think is the 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 alpha that you deserve the the guy that she like uh, women have also a, a reproductive problem to solve and theirs is actually i think is a little bit more difficult than men's is that's why women have a hypergamous filter they they can filter out their the the existential fear for women is to get to be fooled to be tricked by a beta into believing that that beta was alpha and then having that beta's kids right well what happens when that actually happens, right? Well, women, they're like, oh man, I, I mated with a with the wrong guy. I, I'm, he's not my soulmate, the guy yeah, that- I, I could have done so much yeah, better. I could have done so much better. That's the, whole, that's, that's the hypergamous doubt. Is he the best that I can do? When that answer is no, he's not, and I've divorced him. And now I'm looking back to the guys that I, I nailed in college. That's when, that's when they go onto Facebook and they say, how are you doing? You know, you say no. <laughs> You know, yeah. So yeah, it's it's very easy for the same exact reasons. That I mean, an alpha widow can be eighty years old, right? If you watch, here's a great example. Go watch the video of Katy Perry, of how she uh she goes through uh what the song um what is it uh the one that got away. Go look up mm -hmm. the one that got away by Katy Perry because she actually does that. She casts herself as being eighty years old and still pining for a guy that she. Uh, the, uh, the guy dies right so she can't so she's blameless right but she's still thinking about the guy who is this you know this emo artist that she had so much fun with when she was like in her early 20s but here she is a married old maid to a guy who has a lot of money and has provided for her and, and given her a great life but she's now she has the luxury of thinking really about what would have better been him yeah exactly so she can so she can write a story and that it's interesting because um uh boy k perry wrote that song when she's in her late 20s so oh. there had to have been some alpha widow that or alpha guy that she's widowed from and her fear is to get to 80 and have those regrets still like at the end of her life so and it's funny too because in these i'm not going to use pay as an example but the more distance there is between this guy that got away and the current day the less bad things she'll remember and the more good things so mm -hmm. it's almost like it's not even being alpha widowed by that dude it's by the idealized image of what the dude was mm -hmm. 
It was just like when I deployed, I remember I wrote down, I had a journal there too. And I realized how crappy every day was out there on deployment. Mm -hmm. But when I got home six months later, all I can remember, it was like a year long party in Dubai. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the more distance, and I think that's the worst part about alpha widows is that until the more distance or the more distance you have between when he was around and when he's not around, the more mm -hmm. unrealistic an expectation that the girl gets. And that's why I don't really envy them. Mm -hmm. Which so, and it also sucks for the guy because you can't. That's like trying to outdo Jesus to be the alpha god in your woman's life. It's just not going to mm -hmm. happen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna just really quickly here. Uh, LB John 15 gives us five bucks. He says, uh, "Guys who try to convince women that another dude is gay because of jealousy are the same dudes who ice skate uphill." Keep up the good work. Bro. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, cool nineties reference, bro. <laughs> that's the, uh, that's the, um, I mean, that, that's, that's most beta males, uh, default. They don't even realize they're doing it. You want to, like, we talk about the crisis of motive. Like they don't even realize what the latent function is of them saying, well, that guy's probably gay. If he's that good looking, um, they don't even or know when they get shot down at the bar and they say she must be a lesbian. That yeah. Too. Yeah, exactly. And they don't realize that what they don't understand the latent purpose of why they're reflexively defaulting to that. I would almost say that a lot of the guys who are critical of me or you or anybody in the red pill and they want to say, well, those guys are just about sex or they're just they're you know, sex shouldn't be all the, the be all end all of everything. It's like, of course not. Yeah, yeah. the law but is you know not about I, everything. It, but when you get arrested, you sure as hell want to learn it. <laughs> yeah, but it is important. It is very, yeah. very important. And it is something that you should be learning about. If you want to say you want to be the best version of yourself as a man, you need to know this stuff. Now that, uh, you know, Royce in, in what the 16 commandments of Poon said, I think it was number two, where he says, you know, make your, uh, you will make your, uh, what is it, your passion, mission, your mission, yeah. your, your priority, not your woman. That's red pill one Oh one right there. Okay. So, mm -hmm. you know, you still need to understand who she is, what she's about, what women are all about, but you know, have, have your focus on yourself, have your own mental point of origin. So, you know, sex is important it is something that's going to keep you together it is something that you're that you know you need to you need to have and when you don't have it you will try to find ways to to achieve it to solve Ooh. the reproductive problem and let's throw a bone to the chads here or not the chads the trads for the guy who wants to keep his lifelong marriage together mm -hmm. being the best dick she ever had i guarantee you will cover for a lot of character defects you have yeah. A ask me how I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I've, I've heard that there's a program out of how you can make your wife your own slut. Oh, we're going yeah. there, are we? Because, well, <laughs> gosh, well, you know, uh, that that would mean that sex is really, really important. You've got to figure out how to do that. Well, within the <laughs> confines of marriage, of course, right? Within the confines of a of a belief, a belief set and conviction. Right. And it's completely trying consistent to do it. it's with still everything there. on that it's still ideology. Important. Yeah, yeah, the girl doesn't need you. There's a safety net. She could divorce yeah. you for half your stuff. So see, when, what I, else are you there for? See, that's the thing is like they can throw rocks this way, but they're still saying the same thing on that side of the fence, on that side of the playground. They're doing yeah. exactly the same thing. They just well, there's one big important difference is they aren't trying to solve the problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yep. the okay. weirdest part. Uh, C Palms gives us two bucks. He says, love you guys. I love you, I love too, you too, man. I love you too. I love you. Come back over. No. I love my palms. <laughs> I love you so much. I'm going to give you this banner right here at the end. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm going to talk about yourself for a second, Ryan. <laughs> oh, this one. Okay. Uh, I guess a lot of you guys might not even know. So I'm an old pickup artist who eventually settled down, got in a relationship, hit some hard times. Since then, started in the married red pill about 2014 have since taken it public in real life to, you know, help out with Rolo there when a convention that he was starting up. Since then, I've opened up a consultancy as well as a YouTube channel, email list, essentially giving guys, for the most part for free, for sometimes if they want more personal direction on a paid level, the strategies and the techniques they need to navigate the sexual marketplace, whether it's being a single guy or in a relationship. Uh, the one thing I don't do is tell you what you want to do. I just show you how to get there once you discover what it is you want. The tools. So, yep. yeah. Uh, you can read my writing at ryanstone.com slash blog. Mm -hmm. uh, you can drink the coffee that I drink on my videos, ryanstone.com slash coffee. Watch me on YouTube, which is slash C slash ryanstone. By this point, if you haven't found how to find me, then you're never gone to. So, mm -hmm. 
Yep. And, and make sure you like and subscribe to Rolo's channel. If you're in here like as a button, guest, it's worth subscribe. your while. And then also the best way that you can support, you don't have to be a financial supporter, but the best way you can is to simply hit a uh, copy and paste this URL and put it in your, any social media that you have or on your blog would be great. If this really spoke to you or if anything else I've done is spoke to you, please. Uh, you can show us some appreciation that way is the easiest way. However, if you want to make a financial contribution, the, um, all of the ways to do so are in the description. I uh, I am available uh, for consults. I don't really do coaching per se, but if you want to email me, um, it is at rtrationalmail at gmail.com. So you can find me there. Uh, again, all of this is in the description here. Uh, I also, if you are unaware, I don't see why you would be, but I have three books, the Rational Mail series on Amazon. Um, and if you also want to help me out, please feel free to go there and give me a good review if I'll, if I have helped you in any way or any of this has helped you in any way. Uh, always appreciate reviews. Um, I will be back again on Wednesday. I'm going to do a case study. Um, I, I'm going to do another guy who is breaking up with his wife or what doesn't understand why he is in the position that he's in. I'm going to start, I'm going to do, I'm going to make case studies kind of a regular thing. I don't, maybe I'll do them every other week or something, but people really like those. Um, Dude, so. you have no idea how far that reached. I saw a purple pill debate. For not wanting to hear you speak at all, they sure do love taking your work on stuff like this. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Everybody, oh yeah, they they've all moved past me, right? They've all they're yeah. all done with me. I'm losing followers, you know, day, daily right now, right? <laughs> yet they can't. Yet yet they can't do an entire show without mentioning something that I've I've talked about in the past. So what they're going to do now is they're going to try to say, well, Rolo didn't invent that. That's what yeah, you alphabet a whole that's convention and I have next. no idea how know, you did it. <laughs> I know how it works. You know why? Because this is the third time I've been through this bullshit. So. But the good thing is at least they're talking about you. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, talk about me, please. I'm also, <laughs> by the way, I'm on, I'm on Facebook. You can find me here. This is my Facebook thing. So if you want to be my friend, come be my friend. Um, and then this is the Facebook group for Rule Zero right there, which we will be back on Saturday. Everybody had lots of things to do. This is the busiest time of year for me and my in my line of work. Um, so I've, I've managed to do some pretty good stuff in spite of that, but we couldn't get to it on, on Saturday, but we will be back on this coming Saturday. Um, hopefully with Rich Cooper, it'd be nice if we had Rich involved. It'd be good. Uh, just quick too here. Uh, a lot of guys in the chat are mentioning, mm -hmm. spell Ryan with an I. Yeah. Apparently Ryan Stone with a Y pops up with a definitely different type of content. Probably not what you guys want to see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, anyways, hey, thanks for joining me today, Ryan. It's been a lot. Of, it's been a pleasure, and uh, we should. We'll have to do this again sometime. I'm. I'm glad you. I did. I really enjoyed on. myself yeah, too. I like how you give me two, two hours. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for getting along with two hours, man. Oh, it's right, more man. productive. Yeah. 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 Okay, man. Great show. See you guys have later. Fun.